Hello, and thank you so much for joining us for today's kickoff meeting. We are excited to welcome you to our James Carey Smith Community Grant kickoff meeting. We're so excited to formally launch the grant program. My name is Eleanor Mattern. I use she, her pronouns, and I work with the Air District's Community Engagement Office. So we are recording this event and we will send it out to everybody. And with that, let's dive right in. We'll do additional introductions um, in a few moments. So first off, we'd like to briefly share some Zoom information. I know folks are pretty well acquainted with Zoom at this point, but just in case, don't wanna make assumptions. So you should see buttons on your screen to mute yourself when you're not speaking. And you can share your video if you would like. You can also see information about how to rename yourself and raise your hand and use the chat feature. If you haven't already done so, feel free to rename yourself to include the name of your organization. That's really helpful for everyone to see. And then if you need any assistance during today's kickoff event, um, if you're having Zoom issues or things are going, um, going wrong, feel free to call or text this phone number on the screen, 415-604-1405, or email the uh, info at interethnica.com address that you see, and we'll get you some help and get you back on track with Zoom. So with that, uh, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Again, this webinar is being recorded and we will provide a, an overview document um, with information for everyone after the event. So that will have key information. We do wanna cover a few par principles of participation for today, excuse me. We ask that one person speak at a time and meet yourself when you're not speaking. And then as we all know, technology happens. So we hope you can be flexible and patient um, if we lose our connection, if something gets glitchy, thanks in advance for your, your patience with that. So here's an agenda for our time together today. We will do, um, we'll start with a welcome from Suma Pisapati of the Air District. And you'll hear brief introductions from the grants team. Uh, we will have a breakout session for grantees to meet each other. And we'll share a short overview of the Air District and the grant program. And then after that, I'll share some important administrative information um, that will include details about reporting and invoices and communications. Interethnica will, will discuss technical assistance for grantees. And then RDA Consulting will lead a discussion on evaluation of the grant program. And we'll have plenty of time for questions and answers. So you're welcome to put questions into the chat at any point during the meeting. And we will try to address questions as possible during the event. And then folks will have the opportunity to unmute and ask questions at the end during the Q&A portion. So now I'd like to hand the mic over to Suma Pisapati, the Air District's Environmental Justice and Community Engagement Officer. So let's see if we have Suma on the line. Hi, Eleanor, can you hear me? Absolutely, thanks Suma. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, thanks for that kind introduction. As Eleanor mentioned, um, I'm the, uh, my name is Soma Pisapati. I'm the Community Engagement and Environmental Justice Officer for the Air District um, on behalf of Community Engagement and the entire Air District. I um, want to offer a warm welcome to you all. Um, and I'm really excited to be part of this kickoff meeting for the James Carey Smith grantee cohort for 2022. Um, <clears throat> as you may have heard, this is an exciting new era for the Air District. Um, thanks to the leadership of our board of directors um, and executive team, uh, the Air District has refocused and pivoted this grant program in new and innovative ways. Um, with this grant cohort in particular, we seek to develop and deepen long-term capacity building efforts with communities, provide comprehensive support that meets your organization's needs, and also encourage grantees to collaborate and synergize together to just make your impact all the greater. Um, 
I also want to express our deep honor that you chose to collaborate with the Air District on your environmental justice initiatives. Um, and want to further emphasize that the work that you and your organizations do uh, really is instrumental in addressing air quality concerns in your neighborhoods. Um, and of course, um, in improving the health of communities that are impacted by historical environmental inequities. Um, uh, once again, I'm just so happy. We're thrilled to be supporting you. Um, so on behalf of the Air District, I wanna thank you all for your dedication and your commitment to part partnering with us uh, on this important work um, and to provide support um, for air quality and health, out, uh, health outcomes for communities throughout the region. Uh, we look forward to continuing to work with you and leaning on your expertise um, and advice as we continue to address environmental injustices and disparate impact of air uh, pollution throughout the Bay Area. Um, once more, thank you for your service. And with that, I'll hand it back to the community engagement team. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Suma. We really appreciate it. Um, so now we'd like to briefly introduce the Air District's fantastic community grants team. Um, so you see pictures here and folks are on the line. Um, Megan, Ayla, Root, Anish, Joshua, and myself were all members of the Air District's community engagement office. Um, Anish isn't able to join us today. He's currently on parental leave, but he will be back later this month. And we all wear many hats, um, but we all work on a portion of the community grant program, doing a lot of behind the scenes work. And we're so, so excited to be working with all of you um, to support your efforts in the community. So next, we would like to hear from all of you. We have representatives from at least 28 funded organizations are so here today. So we'll do some quick polls to get a sense of who is here in the Zoom room. Um, and a reminder for the um, administrators on the line, please don't answer these polls <laughs> if you work for the Air District or close the poll windows that pop up. Okay, so the first one is a fun warm up question just to get everyone started. Did you eat lunch today? So take a quick moment, reply to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So it looks like some folks did, not everybody has the time to do that. All right, so let's go to the next poll here. Okay, so where will your grant funds help you reach people? And check all that apply. I know some of you are working in multiple geographies. Um, so this is easier to answer for, for some than others, but let's get a sense of who's in the room. Um, okay, a few more responses coming in here. Okay, great. Thank you so much, everyone. And then our next poll Where will your grant, oh, excuse me, what type of work is your project hoping, what type of work is your project hoping to accomplish? Select all that apply for these capacity building grants. Okay, really exciting a lot of critical work. Thanks you all. Okay, so with that, <clears throat> um, we've got one more poll and we'll start out about this question. Is this your organization's first grant award from the Air District? We know some of you have received grants in the past. For some of you, it's the first time. This is helpful for us to see how to tailor the content today. Great, okay, a good divide. So excited we have some new um, grantees that we're working with. Um, and then we'll lean on those of you who have worked with Air District grants before as well. You have a lot of good knowledge to share. Okay, thanks so much, everybody.
I wish we could see you in person today. That would be so fun, probably do some hugs and, and whatnot, but here we are in Zoom. So thanks for your patience. Um, <clears throat> so I will now pass it over to Inner Ethnica for their introduction. Hi, everybody. First of all, woohoo, congrats to everybody that won these, especially to the 30 to 40% that have never won one of these grants. Um, I know a lot of you see our names and wonder a little bit about us. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit about Interethnica and about me specifically. We do work a lot for environmental justice. I was born and raised in San Francisco. Proud to be born and raised in districts 10 and 11. For those of you that know, that's the Southeast side of the city. Public school girl, went to school in D10. Um, I'm here today with my colleagues, brilliant colleagues, I will tell you, Mona, who does all of the magic behind the scenes. She's a UX and research and, um, and cultural anthropologist. Allison, um, who's brand new to our team, but has a deep background in environmental justice and equity. And Deborah, um, who's the associate principal and also you have met on previous meetings, possibly. Uh, I just want to say that our goal and what we celebrate is uplifting communities that are not normally at the table. And we are so grateful for the work that we've been able to achieve with the Air District in expanding their reach to a lot of um, organizations that may not have been on the list before. Um, and we work hard with government agencies to define spaces where communities could give input that affects the outcomes of their daily lives. And that's our work and that's our goal. And we're so looking forward to helping you in any technical way or any other way on this project. So we've partnered with the um, Air District to simplify the uh, application. So those of you that um, applied the first time around may have felt it was a little easier. We simplified it and we reached out to a, a much greater um, group of organizations, specifically those that do serve marginalized and non-English speaking communities. And um, our big goal is to help you in any technical way, but also to get you ready for those Assembly Bill 617 community um, applications. Next slide. And I'm gonna go ahead now and turn it over to our colleagues at RDA. Take it away, Sarah. Great, thanks so much, Lisa. Um, and I also I'll echo that congratulations to all of you folks who have, who have received these awards and are beginning or about to begin um, some of this important work. My name is Sarah and I'm a consultant with RDA Consulting. Um, my colleague Namisha here is also on, on the call today. We'll be leading the evaluation uh, of the grant funds. And so we'll, we'll dive more into that a little bit later, um, but to let you know that we've worked with the Air District on this particular project as well as several other projects in the past. Um, and so we're, we're really eager to continue to uh, hear from you all ways that, that the Air District can continue to support you um, and, and elevate the important work that you're doing. So we'll dive more into that uh, in a little bit. Great, thank you so much, Interethnic and RDA friends. So here you can see the, the Air District's mission. Um, and just for a quick overview, um, so the Bay Area Air Quality Management District was actually the first regional air pollution control agency in the nation. So we were established in 1955 and our agency encompasses the nine counties around the Bay Area. Um, we report to a 24 member board of elected officials. And we cover around 5,300 square miles, and we represent approximately 7 million residents in our jurisdiction. So our teams work really hard, but obviously we can't um, improve air quality in all the nooks and crannies of this huge geography without your critical efforts. So on the next slide, I'd like to talk a little bit about the James Carey Smith Grant Program. Um, and I think you all know that the Community Engagement Office at the Air District has provided grant funding to local nonprofit organizations for over a decade. Um, and that's really to support community-based solutions that address air pollution while also helping to reduce our global climate impact. So the program is named for Jim Smith, the Air District's former community outreach manager. And he launched the first community grants program back in 2009. Um, he unfortunately passed away in 2015 from ALS. 
and the grant program extends his vision of a more engaged and empowered community. And some of you on the line had the chance to work with Jim Smith. Unfortunately, that was before my time with the Air District, but I'm envious. Um, it sounds like he was a tremendous person. So the James Carey Smith grant program has grown. Um, as Suma mentioned, we are at an exciting phase and we look forward to working with you all on the capacity building efforts in local communities. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to my colleague Ayla now, who will get us ready for grantee breakout rooms. All right, yeah, thank you, Eleanor, for that. Um, as she said, now we're gonna shift in some, into some breakout rooms. We're really excited to give you some time to get to know folks in a bit of a smaller setting and share a bit about yourselves and the work you'll be doing. So we'll, se we'll separate you in breakout rooms. You'll get a pop-up about that to join. And when you're there, go ahead and popcorn around and share in your small group your name, your organization, and one thing your grant will support your organ doing that you are most excited about. Um, and there's going to be a few of us in the room to make sure that we're on track for time and to listen and to, and also we'll be there to support in case you forget the questions that you need to answer. Um, yeah, so we'll have 15 minutes in those breakout rooms and then we'll come out for a share out session. Bye. Wonderful. Okay, there we are. Okay, so who would like to kick us off? Any brave soul? I will. Uh, this is Ellen Wu with uh, Urban Habitat. It's our first grant with Bach Bend, and it's great to be working with the Air District and um, hopefully opportunity work with um, the other grantees too. And our grant is to incorporate um, more EJ content and work in our Boards and Commissions Leadership Institute. Um, Urban Habitat was founded in, um, it has its roots in EJ and we're excited about the opportunity to like go deeper and ingrain it um, into our organization. We, oh, we, our content area is um, housing and transportation. So that intersection, um, but it's, you know, good to um, go back to our roots. Thanks so much, Ellen. All right, who is next? I can go next. Um, yeah, hi, um, my name is Sarah Shim with Brightline Defense. And Brightline Defense is Policy Association. I'll be supporting um, our program coordinator who I, I saw in the larger group and um, uh, working on um, really like talking with SRO tenant leaders in San Francisco um, and identifying key barriers to access and engagement um, with um, air quality and air quality um, related programming and issues. And we're very excited um, to do this project. Thank you so much, Sarah. Such an important community to work with. Joelle. Good good uh, hi, everyone. My name is Joelle. I am the program director with Earth Team. We are located in Richmond, but we work with uh, high school students from public schools in Alameda and Contra Costa County. Um, we're super excited to continue working with the, the Air District. And um, what we're going to be doing in the coming years is working with high school students uh, as paid interns to assess the air quality, human health, and environmental justice needs of their community, um, collect data, and create um, engagement and policy projects uh, at their schools and in their communities. Um, one thing I'm really excited for is the opportunity to work more closely with other grantees. I think that there's so many people doing really um, exciting work and I'm really grateful that the Air District is putting together these meetings for us to get to know each other and, you know, hopefully collaborate and streamline all the work that we're doing. So really excited for this year. And feel free to unmute you all. You can do it organically. I won't call on folks unless you make me, but this is really great to hear from everyone. Okay, can everybody hear me? Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Um, I'm here. Uh, my name is Alea. This is Mr. Shannon. And uh, we are representatives of Marin City Climate Resilience and Health Justice. This is our first time, uh, you know, having uh, the opportunity to share. So we're going to be brief and hopefully we uh, hit all the points. Um, 
But yeah, like I said, we represent Marin City Conversations and Health Justice. We're an environmental justice organization. And uh, we're really excited about this air quality grant, especially getting the community involved and understanding the seriousness of what clean air means and what clean air um, doesn't look like and understanding the different nuances, um, working with various partners to you know, get, get some of these things addressed in addition to getting our youth involved. Um, I know that during the, our summer program, we're going to be um, engaging our youth and uh, kind of taking them down this journey of what air quality is or air pollution to begin with um, and how those particulates can even get into your bloodstream, into your lungs. And, and why is it that a lot of their peers have asthma and kind of uh, going into it deeper in addition to, um, you know, working with the various partners. Um, I hope we did a great job. And representing our organization. Typically, Ms. Terry does it, but uh, we gave it a shot. So uh, thank you. We're really excited to uh, continue on in this endeavor, and we're looking forward to the results of it. So, And also, we just want to say, um, really, um, we target the youth because we want this to be a baton passer because the manifestation has come in their era. We just want them to get excited to break it down. So, you know, we're they get to the point where it's just it's real and amazing when they have to face it from their perspective and from their view and get them in, in, uh, and like I say, motivated, inspired, you know, and uh, whether it's with, with music, whether it's with creative options. Yeah, in addition to like creating that um, needs assessment and and how are we going to go about explaining it to our community in a way that's palatable because we know that literacy as far as understanding these types of matters can be a little daunting. Uh, sometimes we use words that we're not familiar with. So yeah, we're just really excited overall. So thank you. Thank you both so much. Fantastic. Who's next? I'll go next. Hi, I'm Terry. Um, I'm the project coordinator for Tri-Valley Air Quality Community Alliance. Um, we serve uh, San Ramon, uh, Pleasanton, Livermore, and Dublin. Um, our goals uh, this year is um, to, to out for, um, outreach uh, to students, um, uh, share with them the, uh, an understanding of the Tri-Valley Airshed and how um, the pollutants get trapped in our uh, region. Um, I, uh, specifically, uh, my job is to, uh, to continue our incentive program to help uh, commercial landscapers um, electrify the lawn equipment because that's one of the major source of our pollution here. And, um, and another project I'm working on is to reach out to um, under-resourced communities to offer them um, actually personal air cleaners that uh, we're building. So um, um, our, uh, the founders of uh, this organization were... Um, have, the beginning of this organization had a lot of scientists uh, involved, uh, you know, working from the Livermore uh, National Lab. And so um, we have an internship program uh, with college students hoping to pass on knowledge to the next generation to uh, protect our uh, air. So, yep, next one. <laughs> I can go. Uh, this is uh, my name is Patty Breslin, and I'm with San Leandro 2050. And this is our first James Carey grant, and super excited to learn more about what all you are working on. Um, so I think the thing that I'm most excited about, in addition to the to the work of going out in talking to folks about a lot of the things that you guys all have identified, is also that. We are um, able, we are through this grant able to hire our first two employees, which is super exciting for us. We've been a group of volunteers uh, up to now. And um, so we hired two fantastic people uh, that we're very excited about. Um, they're both um, women who went back to school at an older age and are graduating this year um, with uh, one is a public health uh, major and the other is majoring in law, um, social justice and equ equity. And uh, so great, great um, opportunity to work with these ladies and um, 
you know, we're just excited to all learn together about how best to um, do this work because I think we're all just learning together. That's all I got. Hi everyone, my name is Daniela Castañeda and I am a community organizer with Silicon Valley uh, Bike Coalition. Um, I am fairly new to the organization. Um, I started working about two months ago and I'm specifically super excited that um, this opportunity came because I'll be working specifically in my community um, as this is what the funds for, this is what the grant is. And we are gonna be building capacity um, on the east side of San Jose. Um, you'll notice that there's a lot of uh, people from Silicon Valley that will focus on east side of San Jose. It's a very under-resourced, very um, underserved. And we're gonna be focusing on building capacity so that um, the members of these communities uh, will learn about the bicycle movement and why um, they need to get involved in how um, it affects their communities and making them better, um, safer streets um, for them and, and their children. I'm going to say ours because it's my community too. And then um, learn about infrastructure and um, ur uh, bicycle urban planning design and how to mobilize and change our community and demand change so that we are able to have a healthy um, community because um, we too deserve to have um, a, safe, a safe place to live and not worry about um, the things that, that affect us through the air quality. And we wanna do that through um, bicycles. Awesome, thank you, Daniela. And we have just about three minutes left for I think three more folks and we'll identify someone to report out. So over to Stephanie, Trina or Analia. Uh, um, this is Stephanie, I'll go quickly. Hi, I'm Stephanie Taylor from Communities for a Better Environment. Nice to meet everybody. Yeah, you know, we're really excited um, by the public outreach and the continuing engaging the youth and getting the message out on air quality and working with the air district on their rulemaking. Thank you. And I didn't mean to cut anyone short. Over to who's next? Trina. Hey, everybody. I'm Trina Mackey. I am a, a partner with the Vallejo Citizen Air Monitoring Network. I myself am on the faculty of Turo University, California, and I'm excited to collaborate with VCAM in their efforts to um, train and, um, you know, build capacity in youth and community um, uh, residents to do more around um, actions that can um, change their environment, improve um, uh, air quality, conduct monitoring, um, do education around asthma, around um, you know home remediation, uh, uh, and we're hoping to bridge um, mentorship with the students in our Masters of Public Health program with some of those youth. Um, so um, looking forward to to continuing um, ongoing relationships with um, Vallejo Citizen Ear Monitoring Network. And Ken and others from BCAM, I think, are stuck over in other rooms sharing more. Thank you. Analia, over to you. Cool. Uh, my name's Analia. I'm with the Bayview YMCA. And our grant is going to be supporting our Environmental Advocates Program, which is a um, a uh, youth workforce development model that we've used before, but what's really exciting about um, being partnered with the, the Air District is we will be focusing on air quality issues. We'll also be um, incorporating um, some youth uh, into a community needs assessment process, so really teaching them about um, community organizing and, you know, what, what it takes to do in a, a community assessment like that, so we're pretty, we're pretty excited about that. Wow, what a tremendous room. I have to say, you all, we've been doing all this behind the scenes, you know, emails and documents, and it just brings it to life to meet you all and see you all. And it's super inspiring to hear about all the synergy, all the geography. Um, so kudos to all of you. Um, in our remaining few moments, would anyone like to volunteer to report out? Um, obviously, we won't do a word for word recap, but just it, it would be like a 90 second to two minute sort of you know, any themes that you heard or anything that stood out to you? Would anyone like to volunteer to do that for the larger group? I can make an effort. Sure, thank you, Trina. Um, and again, thanks to you all. I'm so, so inspired by the work you're doing and um, so grateful for your time today. So we'll keep doing some interactive pieces, but thanks for being in our breakout room.
So sorry to hear that, Eddie. We completely understand. Um, hope you take care of yourself and, and keep resting up. Um, feel free to use the chat if you want to participate and we can certainly read out your responses to the group. Does okay. so anybody want to volunteer to um, share first about their organization or their project? I can go. Hi, y'all. My name is Rachel Green. I use she and they pronouns, and I am the programs and operations at Mycelium Youth Network. Um, and we have um, a youth leadership council um, that's in Mission High School, I believe. And I've only been in this job for two months, but that's okay. Um, and it'll support the air portion of their youth participatory like action research and moving that into like a community needs assessment and implementation in their neighborhood. So it's a really, really exciting project um, that will be funded in specifically the air portion because they're working with multiple elements. And if folks are comfortable, we can have the speaker kind of popcorn next. So Rachel, if you want to call on someone um, and if anybody uh, is not ready, you can say pass um, to the next person, but we'll try to kind of toss it around that way. So Rachel, you want to call on the next participant? Yes, Larissa. Hello, everyone. Um, my name's Larissa Casillas and I work at Urban Habitat. And um, <clears throat> we uh, have a strategy that we call Boards and Commissions Leadership Institute, where we train uh, BIPOC communities to serve on government, local and regional commissions um, to you know, create change, policy change, cultural change, or um, process change to basically make commissions more transparent and accountable to communities, um, communities of color, low income communities. And with this grant, we are going to be uh, strengthening our lens around environmental justice and training commissioners who currently sit on EJ related commissions um, to uh, analyze policies and projects through an environmental justice lens. So we're very excited, Urban Habitat, um, you know, uh, sort of comes out of the environmental justice movement and so excited to be going back to our roots. Um, and I will throw it over to Joshua. Thank you, Larissa. Joshua Abraham, I'm actually with the Air District. I'm part of the grants team. Uh, nevertheless, it's really exciting to get to know all of you today. and. I'm starting to learn more about the projects um, in the, the communities that you serve, uh, the issues that you project, highlight, and protect. Um, so I've been at the Air District for, for quite a while, but I actually have um, my professional origins and activist origins in the environmental justice movement uh, in the Bay Area. So really proud of that, and that continuously informs my work and how I move at the Air District. So I uh, have a lot of different projects that I work on, but I'm working with the amazing grants team and i um, really, really lucky to be working with the team. So let me, thanks for calling on me though. Appreciate that. Let me zoom out here and see who's in the room. Let's see. And I will popcorn it over to Alexis. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Alexis and she, her pronouns are fine. I work with SEI and we're a nonprofit that basically focuses on uh, sustainability and climate change education and workforce development, starting in kindergarten, moving all the way um, into early career and, and vocational training. And the um, project that we're gonna be doing through this grant is um, essentially running some energy, some uh, challenges or kind of campaigns with participating high schools. So um, we have a sort of um, a whole host of challenges, but we're going to be focusing on energy and air quality. So essentially students will be working um, 
you know, completing, you know, checking off tasks from the list, completing um, different educational assignments, working with team members, um, culminating in a sort of campaign project that they um, identify and initiate and undertake as part of the um, as part of the challenge process. So that's sort of what we'll be doing. And um, we also I'll just put out there that we we um, because our, of our kind of workforce development side, we coordinate green careers webinar series and we like to reach out to folks who are doing really great work in um, clean energy economy and organizing and climate justice. And so I'm excited to hear some of the projects that you're identifying because we would love to um, collaborate and host you as green careers panelists. So, oh, and um, I will popcorn to uh, Crystal. Hello, I'm Crystal Abasolo and I'm with the Bayview YMCA. Um, something that just we're excited about is that this will help with the community needs assessment um, that we are hoping our young people will be able to implement um, and it'll just help give them agency in continuing to improve the community that um, they live in and that they love. So, yeah. Um, having a hard time seeing everyone else that's like on the side that wasn't just talking. So if someone else would like to pick someone to go. Hey, I'll, I'll call out Nathalie. Hi everyone. And you might hear some dogs in the back room. <laughs> um, my name is Nathalie Palomino. I work with Valley Verde. And so we are a nursery, but we also teach folks how to garden at home. Um, and we are a nonprofit, and the way this grant is going to help us is we're actually going to use it towards our composting initiative, where we do help um, folks and families who don't have the resources to learn how to garden and compost at home um, to get all the, the teachings, um, all the materials that they need to be able to do it, um, to hopefully redivert those food scraps from going into our landfills and um, um, yeah, helping reduce those greenhouse gases as well. So we're very excited as well. And I'm gonna throw it to Sarah. Sarah. Thanks. Um, I, you're totally fine. Um, I will be telling you more about the evaluation work in a little bit. So I will kick it over to, um, I believe Linda and then Bradley, um, I think are the only folks that haven't shared yet. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm inspired to hear everybody's projects. Um, wow, very honored in this group. Um, my name is Linda Hutchins Knowles. I use she, her pronouns. I'm with Actera, Action for a Healthy Planet. Uh, we're a Bay Area organization that brings people together for local solutions to the climate crisis with a focus on equity. And our project, I'm very excited about the fact that we're going to be both learning from and informing in a kind of a interactive way with the community about the connection between air pollution and transportation and bringing inspiration and resources for the communities uh, accessing more clean transportation solutions like electric school buses or e-bikes, electric vehicles, walking, all those different solutions. So just excited about the win-win-win for the climate, health, and equity. So that's our group. Thank you. And I guess I go next. Uh, hey, everybody. My name is Bradley Angel, and I'm the director of Green Action for Health and Environmental Justice. And we are um, in our 25th year. We are a community founded by grassroots leaders from urban, rural, and indigenous communities, uh, led by those uh, by grassroots leaders from urban, rural, and indigenous communities. And this grant supports the work of Green Action and community partners, including um, and specifically the Baby Hunters Point Mothers and Fathers Committee, uh, the Marie Harrison Community Foundation, and the Hunters Point Community uh, Biomonitoring Project, Dr. Sumchai's effort. And um, real quickly, the um, the grant funds will be um, are supporting uh, several interrelated projects around air quality and environmental health and justice. We're uh, this summer gearing up for. Uh, Youth Environmental Leader, Justice Leadership Academy and Adult um, 
a similar academy. And again, all this work is in Bayview Hunters Point, where we've worked since we were founded. Um, so we're going to have our youth and adult separate leadership academies um, doing a, with our community partners. We formed an air protectors team that's out uh, several times a week educating the community on air quality, health and justice issues and how to get involved. Um, it supports the seven year old Bayview Hunters Point Environmental Justice Response Task Force and our BVHP-IVAN.org uh, website that allows residents to file pollution complaints online. Um, and very importantly, um, and in a way, the mo thing I'm most excited about about this project, since it's about a lot of the grant uh, requests for proposals focused on um, civic engagement and helping the community uh, and providing education and opportunities and skills for civic engagement is actually to engage with none other than the Bay Area Air District who's doing some really good things and some things that are really not so good to put it politely. Um, and uh, including allowing polluters at the Port of San Francisco to operate with that permit. So this grant will actually be used in, in a constructive way to engage with BACMED and other agencies around all these issues so that we can um, you know, hopefully together see uh, improvements in public health and environment and justice. So thanks. Thank you, Bradley, for, for sharing. Um, a couple thoughts. We are going to be moving back into the main session in a few moments. Um, so we still need a volunteer to potentially share out. Um, so if somebody wants to volunteer themselves, feel free to ask any questions. I want to also uplift that Alexis, I believe from SEI, um, was mentioning this about the opportunity for um, the career panelists. So encourage you all, Alexis, would it make sense for folks to send information in their in the chat to you for a personal contact if they're interested in that? Certainly. I'll also put my email in the chat. Right. And Eddie, if you want to um, also share anything about your program um, or how you'll be using the grant funds in the chat as well. Um, certainly encourage you to do that. We can read that. Yeah, again, apologies. I've just um, been trying to preserve my voice today. I, I have two other staff members, Sarah uh, Shu and Cecilia Mejia from Brightline, who will be talking about our program. But the short of it is uh, environmental justice nonprofit. Uh, we work a lot with SRO tenant leaders, uh, particularly in South Market and Tenderloin, which this grant will support, and then also youth leadership cohort that it represents essentially underserved youth across the city. And we often do our work in collaboration with other service provider organizations. So that's us in a nutshell. <clears throat> right. Does anyone want to share out in the main session um, any just like one thing of interest that they learned today? Um, exciting opportunity connection. No enthusiastic public speakers. Well, I can share on back. I can share out. Or initially, you can share out. Um, but you'll be hearing us talk later. So I don't know if you want to hear our voices. else wants to share out I can I've been taking notes um, but please feel free to add anything um, in the share out that I've missed oh Linda did you want to share out or is that a clap I was clapping for the volunteer thank you it's so hard to know sometimes the clap and the hand look the same okay cool I wanted to say thank you as well appreciate that yeah of course um Thank you all for your input. This was very um, insightful and it's really exciting to hear about all of the projects that y'all are holding. So thank you. And Eddie, shout out to you, man. I hope you feel better. Hopefully, uh, like I said earlier, your symptoms are mild. Yeah, thanks. One day at a time right now. Right, I think we can just choose to leave room and go back to the main session because I think the pop-up came and went. Thank you. All right. Be on the other side. <laughs> and ask them in the back in the main room if they can change the view because I can only see you. We I would love to see everybody in the room as they introduce themselves. Is that oh, possible? I see. 
Let me. Lisa, if you um, select gallery view, can you select that up on the upper right? It's, it was not allowing me. Can you select it on yours? I can see you all. I just moved the breakout question over to the left. And now you're- Bam, gotcha. Yahoo. <laughs> it just popped up on mine. Um, I might not have had my screen open um, wide enough. Thanks a lot, Tina. Okay. <laughs> so why don't we go ahead and uh, just get, get to this. Um, I already introduced myself. Allison's my colleague that's gonna be here taking notes. Um, share your name, your organization. And just first take a second and think about when you envision this project, what's the one thing that your grant will enable your organization to do? Maybe not just what you're most excited about, but that you wouldn't be able to do without the grant funds. Um, whoever's ready, go ahead and unmute yourself and, and share. Um, I'll take the lead. Uh, Doug Blakely, I'm with Sustainable Contra Costa. Tina uh, is also with uh, Sustainable Contra Costa. Um, we are going to be working in the East Contra Costa County, uh, particularly along the waterfront in the uh, Pittsburgh Bay Point and Antioch area. And at least during the first year of the project, a lot of it is needs assessment and getting to know the neighborhoods there and mobilizing or uh, encouraging the residents of those neighborhoods to become involved in uh, groups um, and then uh, from our side, um, assessing uh, and trying to determine what the biggest issues are that uh, these groups can tackle. Thank you. There is a, there is a grantee that is working in EPA. Um, I'll introduce you to her. Um, she's working with the Air District and they have the purple sensors out in their Bellhaven neighborhood. Who, 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 who else would like to share? I'll tag on to that since we're both with Sustainable Contra Costa. Hi, everybody. It's good to see you. And uh, hi, Robert and everybody. I'm super excited about, oh, Eve with White Pony Express. And I know Doug's talked to Maria. So answering the question, um, I am most excited about this building a deeper connection with the communities that are the hardest reach to community uh, to reach community. That's why it's always hard to do these things. So I'm super excited that will give us an, an opportunity to build that uh, East Bay Clean Air Coalition is what we are overseeing. Thank you, Tina. Robert, would you like to share? Sure. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Robert with Bike East Bay. Um, and uh, yeah, we've been active uh, in Contra Costa for 50 years, uh, going back to the 1970s. But our Alameda, the education program that I operate is much uh, bigger in Alameda County due mostly to fun funding support from the county that we don't have yet in Contra Costa. So I'm really excited. We've been able to do little events here and there, but not have a more sustained uh, program. So this will enable us to do more in individual communities, but also fund uh, my colleague Stephen to do some community organizing to follow up with class participants afterwards and help to build support and coalition around bigger infrastructure changes and hopefully eventually added funding for even more programs. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Robert. Nice to meet you. Zach? Hey y'all, I'm Zach Deitch Gross. So I use he, him pronouns. I'm the advocacy director here at San Francisco Transit Riders. Um, so we represent the um, almost a quarter of a million people that uh, take transit every day in San Francisco. Um, and our theory of change is really by lifting up the voice of riders, we can make a equitable, sustainable, and reliable transit system for all. Um, starting with the voices of riders who have been most excluded from transit investment or actively harmed by past transportation decision-making. Um, so we're really excited um, to be lifting up the voices and needs of, of riders and community in Bayview and, and Southeast San Francisco um, to secure transit investments that meet community needs and not just what some outside the decision maker thinks might be the best investment. Um, Thank you. So, and I'm born yeah. and raised in San Francisco, so. Excuse you're a native? You're, did you say you're a native? Yep. Woo woo. <laughs> Patrick? Yes. Hi, everyone. So nice to be here. I work with Community Climate Solutions. We're based in the Bay Area, and our work will focus in San Jose. 
And I'm really excited for the opportunity to bring community members together to learn about air pollution and its impacts and then connect them to great groups doing amazing work already. There are so many great initiatives and projects in San Jose. So we want this to be a great kind of empowerment space and connective space. Uh, so we're really excited to facilitate those conversations. Thank you, Patrick. Eve? Hi. I have the worst allergies today, so I'm just going to put that right out there. I feel, I like feel I'm you. I'm in the same days. boat. Okay. <laughs> but also born in San Francisco, so <laughs> <laughs> so we are amongst friends here. I, um, I'm with the White Pony Express Food Rescue Organization, and our focus is on reducing greenhouse gases and methane, uh, CO2 by... Uh, ensuring that all of the wonderful food that ends up in landfill doesn't end up in landfill. Um, so we're uh, very active in Contra Costa County, particularly in East County and Richmond. And this grant is going to help us with the launch of a new app that will enable us not just to rescue from the whole foods and imperfect and large grocers, but to focus also on restaurants, cafeterias, smaller food producers, and, um, and, and it does that. It's like Uber for food rescue. It's called the White Pony Express Food Rescue Hero app. And so individuals can become um, food rescue heroes or food runners, pick up food from restaurants that's prepared and um, everybody will be clear, and it's just launching now, on um, what our food safety requirements are, and then that food will get delivered to one of the 80 nonprofit partners that we work with in Contra Costa. So we are super excited about that, and um, very happy to be amongst this community and connecting to like-minded like groups and individuals. Excellent, Eve. Used to be illegal. My parents had a restaurant. They used to give it away and get tickets for it. Had a, yeah, had good a for them. So yep, fabulous. It's worth a yeah. ticket. <laughs> we got them. <laughs> Cecilia. Hi, everybody. My name is Cecilia. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the program coordinator for Brightline Defense. Uh, Brightline is a hyper-local environmental justice nonprofit, um, and we've had an air quality um, monitoring program in eastern San Francisco, so some of the Tenderloin and Chinatown. And this grant is gonna be able to enable us to um, kind of have a deeper needs assessment of uh, SRO tenant leaders, SRO residents, um, youth in the city, as well as monolingual communities. So we're really excited about that. Thank you. If anybody doesn't know what an SRO, it's a single resident occupancy building. Th thanks, Cecilia. Maria, would you like to share? Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Maria Reyes. I work at La Clinica in the Community Health Education Department. And um, this is the second cycle we receive funding through the Bay Area Quality Management District. So we are excited about being able to continue the work with promotoras around improving air quality in Pittsburgh, Bay Point area, and particularly continuing uh, some of the work around uh, clean air, in, particularly in parks. Uh, some of the work that the promotoras did in year one, um, they identified exposure to secondhand smoke in parks, particularly in Pittsburgh. So we're excited about continuing the work um, to advocate for some changes in that area in particular, and then also looking at uh, the same issue in apartment complexes and multi-unit housing. So good to connect uh, with everybody and uh, very excited uh, to meet and learn more about the work happening in the Bay Area. Thank you, Maria. Promotoras, are, they do outreach on behalf of La Raza Clinica. They're the outreach specialist for the projects, if anybody didn't know that. And I do not want to, do not want to mess up your name, Ianad? Ianad? Yes. Ian, oh my gosh, please just help me. <laughs> Yes. Hello, everyone. I am Ianod Burrell, the Chief oh, Executive right. Officer of Youth Uprising in Oakland. And this grant will organize a group of our youth first to learn about the importance of air quality. And then they will be involved in the conversations, whether it's city council, some stakeholder groups, and then begin to activate the new 
knowledge that they have so they can advocate for better air quality. Thank you. Thank you, Ianon. It's a pleasure to meet any, everybody. We actually have time left in our room. So it, would anybody else like to share anything else? Which we never have time left. So um, I'd, I'd love to hear, you know, now that we're all in the room together and we've talked to each other, do you see um, potential partnerships between your organizations? Is, you know, ways to partner and boost your reach through this program? Patrick, you said you were excited to introduce people to um, stuff that's already happening. And um, the folks, Tina and Doug, I have a couple ideas. I can speak up real quick. So we work really closely with Patrick in Community Climate Solutions already. So that's awesome. And we're partnering Patrick with Actera, um, who's also another grantee. So they're focused on San Jose and also in Pittsburgh. So definitely make sure you're hooked up with them and we can help facilitate that if you need. Uh, Robert, I was going to ask you, who's your Stephen contact for Contra Costa? Who is, the, I mean, our coworker, Stephen? Yes. Yeah, he's he's here and probably in another group right okay. now. What's um, his last name? Uh, well, his email address is just stephen at bikeyspay.org. Okay, it's with a, with a P, PH, yeah. Great. But we're all we're all very easy to find. It's just always the first name. We don't. We had two Daves a while ago, so that caused a, a crisis. But we figured it out. Oh, yeah. actually, uh, sorry. I'm sorry, uh, Robert. Um, uh, Tina had mentioned that we've put together something called the East Bay Clean Air Coalition, and we've actually already invited in uh, some of the other groups that are participating out in the East Bay area, uh, Contra Costa, uh, East Contra Costa. Um, Bay Point area and so on. Uh, Maria, good to see you today. Uh, Just gonna say that, Doug. <laughs> we, we, we've been trying to been trying to connect for uh, several days now. So um, anyway, uh, as part of that, we're trying to put together uh, a real coalition of these groups uh, that can work together in the areas that we have uh, common interests. And uh, as a matter of fact, we have a meeting coming up on Thursday this week for that East Bay Coalition and uh, be happy to uh, extend uh, invitations to anybody else here who would like to join us. Thank you for that, Doug. Maria, they're interested in having you extend the reach to the, to the Spanish speaking <laughs> community. Um, how about Zach? And, and um, Zach, let's see, you and Cecilia are both in the city, right? Yeah, I, I was just thinking about that and, and we'd love to work uh, with Brightline Defense um, to, to expand our kind of outreach. Um, and we also have a youth organizing program, so um, we can connect some of our, our youth with you as well. Perfect. I'll give you my email in the chat. Cecilia, Great. can I ask you, since you're working in Chinatown too, do you have uh, sure. members of your team that are working with the monolingual Chinese community there? Yeah, so we have an um, existing partnership with um, uh, CCDC, and so they have networks um, all throughout Chinatown. Um, we currently have two air quality sensors in Chinatown, so um, hopefully with the renewal and expansion of our air quality monitoring program, which is separately funded by CARB, um, mm -hmm. we'll be able to kind of keep those there um, and closely monitor the traffic and the community, um, what's it called, the community square, the Portsmouth Square. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Inad, would you like to add anything here? You know, she has she has a great handle on the youth in the East Bay. They do great work. Um, youth, on, uh, um, youth are rising. I, I'm working with them on another project. Um, I'm not sure if she, are you still here? All right. Yeah, I am. And I'll probably connect. I saw the list. The list was sent around of everyone. Mm -hmm. So I think there were a couple in the other groups that I'll connect with. Well, mm -hmm. and also, um, you know, I wanted to let you know that Sustainable Contra Costa has a youth leadership program of about 50 uh, high school and college age students called Sustainable Leaders in Action or SLEA. And I believe they already worked with some of your folks, possibly for the no drilling rally uh, a couple months ago. You know, we're going to go back to the main room. Sorry to stop you. I just want to okay. warn you, you have six seconds. <laughs> Thank you. Can you email me? I'm driving. So if you yeah. can email me, that'd be great. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Are just like, Sorry. fully 
um, staffed up from the pandemic. Um, so Stephen actually is our uh, new community organizer hire. Um, so this grant is really letting us fund the work that Stephen will be doing um, in Concord and Pittsburgh and just expanding our reach there. We haven't been able to connect um, in Contra Costa as much and, and spend as much time there as we have in Alameda County because that's where we're based. Um, so yeah, excited to get to bring more people into the fold and excited about um, creating a you know, more healthy planet and uh, biking and walking more. Awesome, thank you, Jill. Uh, anyone else wants to go next? All right, Steven, you're up. I'll go next since I already kind of had a half introduction. Um, I'm Steven and I'm the community organizer at Bike East Bay. And we do all the stuff that Jill just said. And the grant is gonna do all the stuff that Jill just said in Contra Costa, Concord, and in Pittsburgh mostly. Um, yeah, do are we popcorning or are we just waiting for you to delegate? Popcorning, pick, pick your next victim. Mm. Um, Jeff Sanchez, all right. I think you're muted, Jeff. Thank you so much. I was even thinking about that. Anyway, so uh, Jeff Sanchez uh, with Sequoia Foundation. Uh, I'm the uh, program director for this project, also the director of health informatics. Uh, we are actually um, super excited about working with Oakland Unified School District. Uh, we have three campuses that we're working with, um, and I think the most important important part in developing lesson plans around um, uh, air quality specifically in how it impacts East Oakland. Um, and what we're most excited about, I think for me personally is being able to link uh, seniors for their capstone projects with a number of subject matter experts that we're bringing to the table um, and through their work. So hopefully we'll get some uh, exciting capstone projects for seniors and, and getting them uh, some practical experience of, of what it's like to, to, to do this type of work. So excited. Thank you. And let's see, uh, who else is on there? How about Emily? Sorry, I don't have my glasses on, <laughs> but you smiled. So, you know, what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hi. Um, thanks Jeff. Um, I'm Emily, Emily Mallon. Um, I am a project coordinator at SCI. And um, I'm really excited to um, work on our project. We'll be putting together um, some energy and air quality based um, challenges for students to do, to do some research about um, the intersection between transportation and energy and how that affects air quality. And um, it culminates our final challenge as the students create a campaign to get the word out there. Um, about air quality and um, a topic of their choosing. So really excited to um, support that. And I'll popcorn over to, is it Carrie? Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Carrie Harvila and I work at Transform where I'm the Safe Routes to Schools program director. Um, and uh, this grant is funding our Know How to Go Further project which will be working with affordable housing sites um, to help folks access uh, more sustainable transportation choices and make that link between transportation and air quality. I Emily, I'm curious to know where you're doing the work that you're doing. Um, let us know. Um, but uh, yeah, so the, the site that we're working with this year is Lion Creek Crossings in East Oakland. So shout out. I just muted. And um, I think what I'm excited about is, is honestly two things. We are going to be working with young people in high schools who have already expressed with the sort of residential services coordinator an interest in learning more about environmental justice and climate change. And so we're going to be working with them through their summer program. And also the seniors there have really expressed an interest in doing things that get them together again. They used to have a walking club, but then the pandemic happened and they're starting to feel more comfortable about gathering. And so we're gonna be working with the seniors specifically on things that help them serve their needs to get more, um, move around independently with transportation choices beyond cars. 
And I will pass it to Alyssa. Hey, thanks, Carrie. Um, my name is Alyssa. I recognize your organization because one of my close friends, uh, Sheila, actually works at Transform. So I was actually just texting her being like, yeah, I'm on this thing with uh, your coworker, Carrie. Anyways, um, I'll turn my camera on for a minute. I'm Alyssa. I am at Communities for a Better Environment, um, otherwise known as CBE. And I'm the development associate. So we work in East Oakland and Richmond. Um, and this grant is funding our East Oakland organizing work. So um, basically like our youth outreach and engagement. So um, we recently started a youth for environmental justice program in deep East Oakland. So we've been working at like Castlemont um, and some of the other high schools. Um, yeah, our youth organizer does a lot of amazing resilient kit work um, and wellness kits and has been really, yeah, on the ground supporting um, youth through COVID and um, all the other, all the other compounding issues, right? Um, but yeah, I will pass it to, let's see, Root, is that, have you gone yet? Thank you, Alyssa. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Root, and I am um, working with Ayla at the Community Air District, and um, I support the community engagement team um, home and supporting you with um, all your needs and looking forward to hearing about your program and um, all the life changing, environmental changing, youth changing, senior changing programs and looking forward to being um, a support to you. Um, yeah, thank you. So I'll pass it to um, Anika. Hi, I'm Anika. Thanks for being brave and saying, trying to say my name. <laughs> um, I'm Anika Osborne, and I um, I am the uh, community outreach and program director at Cool the Earth, uh, and working on our Ride and Drive Clean campaign to dramatically reduce carbon emissions and air pollution. So we're partnering with Actera in three areas. We're working in Pittsburgh, Oakland, and San Jose. Uh, to do to put on listening sessions about e-mobility and air pollution and trying to understand the uh, what the community's uh, knowledge is about air pollution and the impacts of you know gas cars mostly you know on their their health. Uh, so we'll be doing these kind of listening sessions and then also putting on e-mobility expos uh, at in each of these three locations. So, uh, we're, I'm super excited to meet so many different people and to partner with many of you on some of these uh, programs and events that we're doing. And uh, let's see who else hasn't gone. Jimmy? Hi, uh, my name is Jimmy and I'm with the Vallejo Citizen Air Monitoring Network. Sorry there's no video. I am a last minute uh, stand fill in here for Ken Zutu. He is, uh, he was the one who was scheduled to attend this meeting, but he is on the road headed to uh, Southern California for the Air Sensor International Conference. And that's important to us because we are in the business, quote unquote, of monitoring the air. And we've been doing this for approximately four years. And this grant will really help us with the education phase of it also and organizing the community to be aware. So we've been gathering air data and I'm sure the district is really familiar with our work. And sorry, again, there's no video and we're having, I'm having technical issues being last minute standing here and I'm not at my regular place of business. <laughs> no worries, Jimmy. Alexandra, have you gone? Alexandra, I don't think we can hear you. All right, I'm, I'm trying to also keep track of like who hasn't. Jeff Sanchez, have you gone? Or yes. All right. Usually, oh, it's okay. Alexandra, do you want to drop in the chat your responses and then we can appreciate it there? 
Also, usually in Zoom meetings, I find that we have too little time and I did not prepare for the possibility of having too much time. I've got, um, so I caught some of the places where people said they were working, but maybe if we could drop in the chat, the cities that we're working in, that'd be helpful. And um, make sure you, yes, you add in your organization names, just in case um, it's not listed on your name or by your, by the side of your name, please. Thank you. I have a question um, for the air quality management district folks. Even just now, it's really cool to, to meet all the grantees and I feel like there's so much like good overlap. And I wonder, are there other times during the year where the grantees come together or is this, is this it? Do you know? <laughs> That's a really good point, Carrie. I think, I, th I think, that this this is like the big one mm -hmm. um i think it was hard kind of conceptualizing like how to get grantees together especially with covid and when we planned this like we weren't like even now like i i'm not sure like where we're not sure where covid's going to go um i think the hope is that this kind of maybe starts the conversation and then like if there are people that you meet during these meetings or like if you see, we shared out a um, a roster. And if you see people who, you know, maybe you're doing some research and you're like, oh, like these people are also really good. Um, I've facilitated some introductions between different grantees. And so like, you know, I'm sh like if you reach out to us and you want to facilitate introduction or you just want to contact them directly, like I think that like that's also an option. Um, but yeah, but it feels, it does feel like this is our big, this is the one big thing. And I wish we were having this in person. Yeah, we wish that about so many things right now, but it is good to, it's good to meet people. And I wonder, you know, if, you know, towards the end of the grant, even just to be, to hear what everybody's done and yeah, you know, it's inspiring to hear, to hear folks actually talking about the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it would definitely be cool to hear like what people at the end, like what people have accomplished. Mm -hmm. And that would be a really nice tie back to this meeting. So all right, we're gonna be booted off, but great to talk to y'all. Okay, so folks should be headed to their breakout room. Some of you are intentionally left in here and Deborah will go ahead and facilitate. Welcome everyone. Hi everyone, oh. welcome. Um, I think folks have all gone into their breakout rooms. I can't like quite tell from my screen, um, but we will be staying- 11. Huh? 11 participants, so, so I think we're in our breakout room right now. Yeah, some of us were staying in this main room as our breakout room and I'll help facilitate. So my name is Deborah. Um, I use she, her pronouns. I'm with Interethnica, the technical assistance team. Um, and so, yeah, let's go around and share your name, your organization, um, and um, what is one thing your grant will enable your organization to do that you're most excited about. So feel free to unmute yourselves and, um, and let's spend about no more than one minute per person. Well, I'll go first and excuse me, I'm gonna be 
um, halfway through this meeting. I um, have to um, end it. Um, my daughter is coming from college um, this morning, and so she is panicked about not spending a little time Mother's Day with me before she goes on with her internship at the uh, uh, Center of Disease Control in DC. So um, I only have an hour with you guys, so I would love to go first. Um, greetings, everyone. My name is Camila Elam. Um, I am the Bayview Hunters Point Community Organizer for Green Action for Health and Environmental Justice. Um, I grew up in the Bayview and I currently reside um, in the Bayview. Um, so yeah, um, this grant will continue to allow me um, to uh, keep my community informed, educated, uh, mobilized and galvanized about being surrounded by some of the largest standing sources of, of toxic pollution um, that's uh, right in our backyard as we reside um, in that corner southeast section of San Francisco. So thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Um, and, and we're definitely looking forward to uh, maximizing um, our ability um, to keep our community on the front lines of this issue. Thanks so much, Camilla. Never would it help if I call on folks. Can you see everyone with sharing your screen? I can see most folks. Um, do you want to go ahead, Cece? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Cece, and I'm a program coordinator in the research department at International Children's Assistance, or ICANN for short. And one thing I'm excited about um, that this grant will do for our organization this year is that we're going to continue our Air Quality Ambassadors Program, which started last year, where we do one-on-one -on -one, um, assistance for our community with helping them with incentives and rebates. Um, thanks so much, Cece. Um, how about you, Ron? Hi, I'm Ron, ba <clears throat> excuse me, Ron Basket with the Tri-Valley Air Quality Community Alliance. And we represent the airshed that includes Dublin, San Ramon, Pleasanton, and Livermore, almost 100 square miles. So this is our third year. And we're quite well organized and very excited about uh, extending our outreach and educational programs. We've incentivized quite a number of landscapers to go electric. We're building, uh, we're going to have community air filter builds uh, so that we can reduce exposure to wildfires. And this year, I'm personally very excited about sharing a, a collaboration with Las Positas College, the um, a Quest Science Center, possibly UC Davis. Uh, on measuring air quality with drones. My cohorts uh, here today are Ann Brown and uh, Terry Chang. Awesome. Thanks for that introduction, Ron. Um, how about you, Katie? Yes. yes. My name is oh. Switching, switching devices. So it was perfect timing. <laughs> uh, so hello, everybody. Um, my name is Katie Birnbaum. And here with Livable City and slash the Sunday Streets program, I think is what folks know us about. Um, super excited because we get to um, bring on an organizer for SOMA. So we've been doing Sunday Streets in SOMA for a couple of years now, but we haven't had the capacity to do more long-term organizing between the events. Um, so we're really excited to be able to take the momentum um, from our big mile plus long party and then make it permanent change for a healthier and, and more breathable SOMA. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Katie, for sharing. Um, Marcus? Hi, um, I'm partnering with the Vallejo uh, Citizens Air Monitoring Network. Um, yeah, I think for me, it's just, you know, the fact that there's a lot of data out there and we were using sensor data and then we have, you know, the refinery corridor and I-80 that really um, has a lot of risk to the community. And our goal is to really create that journey for a number of community members to go from understanding of the science to all the way to, you know, self-advocacy and empowerment. So just excited to, to work in that and start hearing from all of you as well. A lot of other similar types of programs. Thanks. Um, thank you. Um, Anne? Hola, amigos. So I'm uh, here from Tri-Valley, along with Ron. 
And he mentioned a lot of our, our um, ambitious goals, but I'm excited about really making a difference for the vulnerable families in our community who have children um, or older adults suffering with asthma by offering them the tools through the EPA, like the Coco is Orange book, as well as the Air Flag program, which I hope we can get into our schools so that when kids arrive at school, they can see right away, well, how's the air? today. So hoping to make our air quality more visible to our community, especially to those who are vulnerable to breath challenges. Great to meet y'all. Awesome. Definitely. Thank you. And Erica? Hi, my name is Erica Neal and I'm with the Sequoia Foundation. Um, and our project is with um, building uh, student capacity for understanding environmental health justice. Um, and I think what we're envisioning is for our grant program to continue to be a model of including students into community engagement um, discussion um, around environmental uh, justice and how and problem solving uh, for that project. Um, and I think one thing that we would want for organizations to do, um, or for our organization to do is to continue partnering with you all to make that happen. Um, I think students work best um, when they're surrounded by a group of people that really wanna see them succeed. And um, Something that Sequoia hopes to do is uh, partner with organizations to let them know that they have such a large support around them, particularly for um, students coming from West and East Oakland. That sounds great. Thank you, Erica. Um, and Darren? Hi, I'm Darren, and uh, you met our director, uh, Katie, earlier. I saw him was a local city. And I um, guess I'm, you know, I'm excited about seeing sort of all the different kinds of stakeholders, you know, whether it's small businesses or people who've lived here for a long time. And that that process of seeing people from different backgrounds or different entities, uh, you know, come together and find common pur purpose is is uh, uh, not always easy, but pretty exciting. And I'm interested in, in seeing that. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks so much, Darren. Um, did I miss anyone? Yeah, there's Kate Walrath, Love Preet, and somebody with the phone oh, number. Okay, I can't, I, did, I can't see the next page. <laughs> Thank That's you, okay. Lana. Let's start with you, Kate. <laughs> no worries. Um, so my name is Kate Walrath. I'm a planner at La Clinica de la Raza, uh, which is a federally qualified health center serving Alameda, Contra Costa, and Solano counties. Um, and we have... We've ha we had a grant with the Air District previously uh, funding a project in the Pittsburgh Bay Point area um, and a group of promotoras that are, are hard at work doing a needs assessment and kind of coming up with some, some next steps. Um, and so I think with this funding cycle, I'm really excited that we're able to continue that work in Pittsburgh Bay Point and also expand over um, to Vallejo um, and recruit a group of folks over there to, to get started on some of this work as well. Thank you, Kate. Um, I see Lovepreet. Hello, uh, my name is Lovepreet. <clears throat> I'm from Valley Verde. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization in San Jose. We help uh, underserved families with growing their food in their own backyards. And one way that we are going to be using the funds from this grant is to start our, a composting program for the families as well, so they can compost at home. And we are hoping to be able to re-divert like food scraps from going into landfills um, instead. And we are also going to be helping the air quality by reducing greenhouse gases. Um, thanks so much, Love Prate. Um, and let me see. Um, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce your name. Please help me. Um, is it 
Yan. You mean Quinn? My name is oh, Quinn. Quinn. Yes. Oh, okay, yes, Quinn. Please yes, I'm so ahead. sorry I'm late. Um, Cici, have you introduced yourself, Cici? Yeah, okay. So uh, my name is Quinn Vong, Executive Director of ICANN. We work with uh, Vietnamese children and families. And uh, Cici is, is one of our team members and we are trying to do um, the air quality from the perspective of the, of the consumer, trying to see how, what they think about electrical vehicles, uh, about air quality, you know, switching things to electric by helping them to, to uh, look into the, the rebates and especially studying how low-income folks can access those assistance programs so that they can really participate in switching over to clean air energy. Thanks so much, Quinn. Um, I see one person on who has called in. If you would like to introduce yourself as well. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is uh, Ken, Ken Sutu from Citizen Air Monitoring Network in Vallejo. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I'm today I'm in transit to um, Pasadena, so I was dry. I was driving, and uh, so I have to. Uh, I want, but I wanted to participate in this uh, conversation, so I'm dialing in. Um, I'm excited about uh, the the grant which we are going to get um, because we are going to use the resource to have uh, in depth engagement with our community. Our community is one of the most impacted one, even though there is no refinery in our city limits, but we are kind of in the middle of the refinery corridor. And as you know, the uh, pollution does not respect the municipal boundary. So we have a lot of uh, uh, pollution in our city and we are excited to have this uh, resource. We can um, work with local uh, community to make sure we can self advocate for our uh, for our right. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ken. Um, I think now I, we've gone through everyone. Let me know if I missed you. Okay, awesome. Well, great. Um, we have less than a minute remaining of this breakout room. Um, when we go back into our breakout rooms, we're actually going to share, give a um, we're going to take a moment to volunteer and share out one thing you learned from the breakout room with the rest of the group. If anyone wants to um, volunteer, <laughs> and we'll go ahead and do that when we return. Well, we're already in the main room, but everyone else will join us. <laughs> Feel free to raise your hand in the function or in real life if anyone wants to volunteer. Ron, I saw you talking. Was that a volunteer? <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. Everyone's going to head back now. The breakout rooms are closing in just a few seconds. Yeah, I was just gonna say that we all have a diverse um, needs in our community. Um, so it's exciting to hear what other people, our goals are and where you're all coming from. And just imagining the diversity all around the Bay. Uh, thanks everyone. I know I can't, um, I feel like I can speak for my, my breakout room is really great. It was really cool to meet everybody and to hear all the work that you're doing. And I'm sure that other breakout rooms were equally just as interesting and engaging. Um, yeah, and so we have a few questions here on the slide, just a few questions that we'd like to ask and have you share, um, uh, you know, like what's something you learned about another grantee? What are ways that you look, that you can think of supporting each other and what are ways that you might need support? Um, 
if anyone has an answer to like one or all of these or like two of them, feel free to share. Ayla, we had a very robust uh, conversation. I would love if one of the participants would like to share um, that was in my room. Um, for example, sustainable Contra Costa, we're going to be working in East Contra Costa County in the Antioch and Bay Point, uh, Pitts Pittsburgh Bay Point area. Uh, our coalition is called the East Bay Clean Air Coalition, and we certainly are inviting in uh, other participants who are going to be working in the area so that we can collaborate and pool our resources. Uh, we have a meeting coming up on Thursday at 11 o'clock in the morning, uh, and we'd certainly uh, uh, accept to uh, love to have other attendees coming into that group. Um, I, Tina put a couple of email addresses in the chat. I'll put them in again. Uh, you can reach out, contact us, and uh, we'll send you the invite for the Zoom meeting on Thursday. Anyone, anyone else have anything that they learned or that they want to share from their breakout rooms? I would like to say from the East Bay also out in the Tri-Valley that one of the things that we learn in suburbia is that landscaping uh, creates quite a uh, significant amount of emissions due to combustion, uncontrolled combustion, and, and almost equivalent to auto traffic. So we have uh, freeways and we have lots of landscaping. We have taken action and uh, we will like to refer you for, for everyone to our website for uh, some of the things that uh, we've done that may make a difference in, in reducing the uh, basically the ozone production that, that uh, the Tri-Valley Livermore is known for being uh, responsible for the Bay Area uh, being non-attainment for ozone. So we're trying to reduce that, that whole footprint. I think uh, that was what I was hearing from uh, Wen uh, Bong as well about uh, electrification is really a key theme uh, to pursue. Maybe the moderators can share if the people, if the participants are not comfortable. I'd love to hear what happened in the other rooms. Yeah, so um, in our uh, breakout, we talked about all of the wonderful projects um, that all of the grantees are starting and a lot of um, community-based leadership initiatives and power building, as well as um, focusing on specific behavioral and policy um, initiatives um, from that power building, which is really exciting. Um, someone from SEI um, talked about a green career webinar series that they're doing, um, and it's really cool uh, to have kind of like this ongoing series while these projects are being um, built, so um, potentially having that knowledge being spread through two different ways through the project and the webinar series, so really exciting. Thank you, Misha. Uh, Carrie, you have your hand up? Yeah, I think one of the things that um, came up or I was reflecting on in, in our group is, you know, there are a lot of us doing work in similar places, like a lot of us were working in Oakland and East Oakland. And um, it just made me think about being thoughtful and coordinating if, if many organizations are trying to do projects with the same community and how kind of overwhelming that can be for a community and um, just really making an effort to be collaborative where it makes sense, but also just informed so that like the same community members don't get a hit, hit up for like four different things that might seem similar to them and not understand the differences. Yeah, thanks, Carrie. I, I liked being, I liked hearing the, all those points of connection in our, in our breakout room. Um, yeah, so thank you all for sharing. Really excited to, to see possible areas of collaboration and support and really happy to see that people are um, are feeling, um, you know, that, pe that people are see seeing points of collaboration and, and that your projects are speaking to one another and that and you're kind of getting that you're excited about each other. I'm really happy to see that. So now I'm going to turn it over to other members of our team to discuss some admin and communications stuff. So 
yeah. Great, thank you so much to Ayla and really to everyone for sharing during the breakout sessions, those are fantastic. Um, so we, first of all, want to share some administrative information. Um, it will be high level. I don't have beautiful slides, but I do have some information that I think will help make the coming grant year um, flow a little bit more smoothly. So I'll share a high level overview of grant contracts and reporting and invoices. I'll talk briefly about communications and then office hours or grantee support is another way to look at them. So we'll pause for questions and answers after this section. Um, and we will also provide, as we mentioned, an overview document um, after the event. So if questions pop up, um, you know, you can put those in the chat, just be thinking about them. Um, we may not get to all questions um, immediately following this, but we will absolutely be sure to work with everybody to get you the information you need. So on the next slide, in terms of contracts, um, first off, we just wanna say thank you everyone for your patience with the contracting process. We know it is not speedy. We really appreciate your patience. Um, so the start and end dates for your funded projects vary somewhat by grantee, and that's due to several factors, but all grantees will be submitting progress reports. So I'll share more detailed information in a moment about reporting. But it's important to know that the Air District provides payment in installments. And so the dates are noted in your contract. And basically during the grant period, um, grantees submit uh, progress reports, deliverables and invoices, and then the Air District provides payment. So after that initial upfront payment, um, there are these installments. So um, one question that comes up sometimes is, what if adjustments to the work plan are needed? We have these lengthy contract documents that have been uh, executed. Um, what if changes happen? Well, we know sometimes changes happen. So what we ask is that you stay in touch. And so if your organization finds that an adjustment is needed to the work plan, um, you would email the Air District at the email address listed here, and then your grant manager would connect with you to discuss what adjustment might be needed. Um, so whether that's a shift in deliverables or perhaps some adjustment to the timing, something like that. So really we're just looking to be in touch and, and talk that through with you. Um, on the next slide, perfect. So in terms of reporting and invoicing, um, so as I mentioned, each grantee will submit progress reports and one final report. So again, the dates are noted in your contract, um, your grant agreement. We will be sharing the progress report template with you all so you can review that. And we also have an invoice template as well in case your organization would find that helpful. Um, some organizations have that on hand, some organizations need a little boost. Um, so we certainly have that and we can um, help in whatever ways. So then each quarter, your organization will email um, a completed progress report form and an invoice and any, oh, can everybody mute for us? Just a little heads up to mute if you're not muted. Thank you so much. Um, and any deliverables, you'll email those over to our team at that same email address. And then the Air District's grant team will review the report and any deliverables. And then from there, we can approve the invoice for payment. So that's a very high level snapshot of kind of how the sequencing goes. Um, the grants team is here for you. And again, we can offer support as needed. And we'll talk about assistance in a bit, um, but we're happy to answer questions at any point. So in terms of um, communications, we do want to note that there will be opportunities to highlight some of the important work you're all doing through the Air District communication channels. And some of you have seen this, right? Or you've um, contributed content in the past, but we have our social media platforms and then there's also the annual report. And so keep in mind that that's a possibility and reach out to us if you have a project, um, perhaps you want help spotlighting it or maybe it happened and you're really thrilled about the success of it. Um, reach out and we may be able to share that with the audiences that the Air District reaches. So that can, you know, potentially help amplify some of the work you're doing, right? So we do have a photo release form that your organization would use to get permission from any individuals in photos or video. Um, so we can work with you on the forms and other logistics, but just wanna hold that up um, because there's certainly a lot of exciting work happening um, throughout the Bay Area. 
And then there are a couple of considerations around air district support. Um, so we'd like to request that your organization acknowledge air district support when funded grant activities are publicized or when you create flyers or other materials. I know we're in a virtual space a lot of times now, but you know, sometimes there's tabling or brochures or things like that. So we have the Air District logo for you all, and we'll share that in a few different formats. Maybe you all are smarter than I am and you know the difference between all these formats, but you'll, um, we just ask that you be gentle <laughs> with the logo. Don't stretch it out or crop it, right? Just put it into your, your material, whatever that is. And then the language you would use is um, funded by a grant from the Bay Area Air Quality Management District. So we know that's a mouthful, um, but we hope that you can avoid using initials or abbreviations and, and just share that. Um, that's really helpful. So um, with that, I want to show you all this timeline. Um, and this is a tool to help put these different grant pieces and requirements in context, right? So at the top in the orange boxes, you can see um, when quarterly reports will come due, Q1, Q2, and so on, and then also the final report. So as I mentioned, just keep in mind the reporting dates do vary somewhat by grantee. So here the timeline shows these windows, right? So um, your organization will have a specific date when reports are due. So for most of you, that quarterly report, that first quarterly report will either be due on June 15th or August 15th. And we'll reach out with a reminder, but you know, note that in your calendar. And um, again, all the information, the dates are in your contract. And um, you know, we'll we'll be in in regular touch leading up to that. And we're really excited to see. That's a chance for us to see your progress and how things are going. And then I do want to highlight several evaluation activities that are an important part of the Air District's efforts to improve this grant program. Um, we'll talk more about evaluation in a bit. But for now, um, take a look at those yellow boxes toward the bottom of this slide. And, you know, as, as you all know, written into your contract is your organization's participation in two um, grant program questionnaires and two focus groups. So there will be a baseline questionnaire um, and then one at the end of the grant in early 2023. The baseline questionnaire will actually be coming your way next week. So you should receive a link to that in your email inbox on Monday. And we'll send um, some reminders, um, but that should be, we think around maybe 20 minutes or so um, to give us some really critical information. Um, so thank you in advance for prioritizing that. And then we are asking for all organizations to participate in two focus groups. Um, those will be led by um, RDA Consulting. One will be this August and then one towards the end of the grants um, in early 2023. So your responses are confidential and very important. And what we've heard is that those focus groups are a really rich time, right? I think we just got a, a taste of that in the breakout rooms. It's so um, energizing to hear about the work that other grantees are doing. There will be other opportunities for partnerships, but do keep those focus, minds in, focus groups in mind and, and we'll reach out with details. So let's stop here. That's a lot of information. Um, let's pause and see what questions have come up. We'll do a little bit of Q&A on all of this administrative part um, before we get into our next piece. So if you have questions, feel free to raise your hand or drop them in the chat. Eleanor, right now we don't have any hands raised or questions in the chat, but we can give folks a few minutes. Okay. Great. I hope I didn't bore you all too much. I know it's a lot of information. Thanks for your patience, everybody. You just got to get that, that reporting and, and contracting stuff out there. Um, so we'll give it a few, just one more minute, see if any questions pop up. Um, but please know that we really do read everything that you submit to us and, and love that. So will these slides be shared? Yes, absolutely. Um, we will be, Zach, working on... Um, uh, a slide deck, um, which will incorporate all the information from the interactive components and so forth. So we'll share that and we'll share a, a recording of this um, event as well. And we'll be able to work on all those pieces and get that out to you next week. 
Do you have a suggested Spanish translation of the acknowledgement at the Air District? That's a fantastic question. <laughs> the acknowledgement is pretty long in English, right? Um, so we will absolutely get that. Let's make a note of that. And we'll absolutely get the Spanish acknowledgement. Um, I know we do have sort of the preferred way of saying el de aire and things like that. So we'll make sure we get you the Spanish translation of that. Thanks, Linda, for raising that up. And thanks, Alyssa, for seconding that. Um, Okay, oh, good question. So we have a question about will the grantee questionnaire be in Vietnamese? So um, currently we're just planning to do that in English. And just to clarify, that is for the folks on the line here. We're actually looking for one response per organization. And that will be about your organization's um, experiences with, for example, the grant application process and things like that. So that will be in English. If you find that you or your staff um, really are getting stuck and you need some help um, talking through those questions, then just reach out and we can absolutely work on some um, interpretation and get you the boost that your, your team needs to be able to respond to that in, in English. Okay, lots of questions coming in, this is great. Um, have we considered monthly invoicing, which could help sustain smaller organizations? Marcus, that's an awesome question. We're always trying to balance, <laughs> it's that juggle, right, between not wanting to burden grantees too much and require a lot of paperwork, just we want to free you up as much as possible to do the work with the communities. Um, and we know that cash flow is also a consideration, right? So that's one of the reasons that we really pushed hard um, to front load a lot of uh, money up front, those large payments up front um, with the, the funded organizations. Um, so that was our attempt to try and be mindful again of cash flow, of the needs of the smaller organizations in particular. Um, we would love to hear any recommendations you have in the questionnaires, the focus groups, lift up what you all need. And the more we hear from you all what you need, we can advocate for you with the air district processes. Great questions, I agree. Um, yes, and thanks again for clarifying. So this grantee questionnaire is for agencies. Thanks so much for clarifying. This is not a questionnaire you will push out to community members. They would probably be a little confused. Um, this will be very much about your organization's experience with the grant application process, the grant, the contracting, which again, we know is not the most fun part, all of those things. Okay, so Terry asks, um, are there any outreach material publications we can share? Yes, absolutely. We do have some publications in English and Spanish and some other languages as well. Um, and so we will absolutely make a note um, <clears throat> to make sure to get you our resource library. Um, we're also looking at ways for grantees to be collaborative. We know that some of you all are very nimble and are creating um, really vibrant community focused communications in a way that's just um, has a different tone than the Air District and those can really resonate too. So we'll be looking at ways to share those. Good, so folks are, are really liking that question. Um, okay, and the focus group, yes. Okay, thanks so much. I'm sorry I wasn't clear. These, I'm glad this slide is still up. So these yellow boxes that you're seeing at the bottom of this slide, those are all um, really for grantee staff, right? So those will be for um, the organizations that have been funded um, through the James Carey Smith grant. So you all will come together. Air District staff will not be at those focus groups. That's a, a spot where you all will meet with RDA Consulting um, and you can you know, air it all, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We really value your honesty as that's the only way we can improve this program. Um, let's see. Okay. Request for resource library to Marin City Climate Resilience and Health Justice. Absolutely. We'll send that information out to you all. Um, again, you'll probably find some gaps, but we'll share what has been published and the languages that that's published in. That can be a nice starting point for you all to look at. Thanks for lifting that up. Um, sharing compiled results of the focus groups with all the grantees um, and questionnaires. Yes, Alyssa, great question. Um, and we will, I'll let um, RDA in a moment, we'll, we'll be sharing some information about evaluation. And so um, we'll let them speak more to that in more detail. But yes, it's, it's key that you all hear from each other, right? Um, kind of the, the compiled information as well as the live um, focus groups and so forth. 
Okay, that was sort of a flurry of questions. <laughs> Hopefully I caught uh, most of them. Um, does anyone, Mona, is there anyone out there with their hands raised? Are there any lingering questions? Um, and we'll have Q&A at the end too. So if you find yourself um, with a burning question and you didn't have a chance to put it in the chat, um, don't worry, we'll stay on the line. Um, we'll do that Q&A at the end. Thanks so much, Eleanor. Uh, no hands raised currently. And the only kind of lingering question is just clarifying that you'll share out the resource library with the grantees. And I see yes. a nodding in the affirmative. So that is the Q&A. And again, we'll have Q&A later in the workshop. But if you have questions as you go, just drop them in the chat and we'll make sure to document them. Awesome, everybody. I think we're right on track with our timeline. And so with that, um, thank you again for the great questions. I'll turn it over to Interethnica. Thanks, Eleanor. Thanks, everybody, for the great questions. Um, just going to go over a little bit of the technical assistance. So just do a quick overview of what's been done. I touched on this earlier, but we simplified the application process, hosted the tips and tricks webinar. We created the tutorial um, for using Bonfire. So um, that still lives. Um, and going forward, um, now that the grants have been awarded, we'll want to continue to support everybody. Um, with their grants and the requirements um, to make sure everything goes in on time and aligns. And so that you're prepared for future grants and ultimately um, get prepared to become an AB 617 designated community um, to deepen the Air District's mission for clean air. Um, next slide, please. Here are some of the areas where, where technical assistance were, would be uh, provided. Uh, making sure that those quarterly, well, progress reports, they're not necessarily quarterly, I guess, invoicing, aligning that with your budgeting, your project. You know, there was a question about for smaller orgs, that's why they gave the chunk of money, the funds up front, and um, helping to, to make all of that smooth and work. Um, tracking work um, to make the reporting easier so you're not at the reporting spot and you go, oh, what did we do? and the evaluation of your project. Beyond this project, the Air District has agreed to um, provide additional support through Interethnica by providing things like grant working, grant writing workshops, finding other grants. That's a pretty cool thing right there. Um, if you don't have a mission statement and would like help developing it, our communications team would be happy to help with that. How to position your organization, no matter the size, so that it stands out. Um, help you create an internal evaluations. And again, to prepare for that AB 617 designation. And now it's time for our wellness break. Everybody take five minutes, have a stretch, use the restroom, and I'll see you back at um, 301. Thanks everybody, see you at 301.
Thanks so much for that relaxing music. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you had a moment to stretch, look away from the computer. Um, let's turn things now over to our fantastic colleagues at RDA Consulting to talk about grant evaluation. Thanks, Eleanor. Um, uh, thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, there's a lot of important information that we're covering and I really appreciate your sustained attention uh, as we are uh, sharing a lot of information with you, knowing that soon you'll be hearing more from you all directly. Um, my name is Sarah Farrell. I'm a consultant with RDA Consulting. I'm going to share a little bit about the purpose of our evaluation. So um, to let you all know, uh, in the past, as you may be familiar, the Air District offered different grant programs. Um, they were the Community Health Protection Grant and the James Carey Smith Grant. And last year in 2021, uh, the Air District did an evaluation and realignment of that into one program, which is what um, is funded and why we're all here today. So um, in 2022, uh, RDA Consulting will continue to support the Air District in evaluating the realignment. So what efforts, what changes were made, um, and how did those changes support um, your organizations and the communities that you're working in. So just to clarify, this is not an evaluation of your performance or your programs, but rather an evaluation of the ways in which the grant program itself is structured and how does it support um, the grantees and, and your efforts. Um, so just to let you know, as we mentioned, there was this um, kind of realignment. And so last year in 2021, when we did an evaluation of the programs at that time, um, we asked grantee organizations about how the Air District could create improvements that would address the types of barriers that grantees were experiencing in the application process and contracting and reporting. Um, we also asked how the Air District can increase access for communities of color and for communities disproportionately burdened by air pollution. So how could we um, expand the reach of these grant programs? And we asked grantees about um, what organizations need, what do your all's organizations and agencies need to effectively engage and support impacted communities? And so this was the, the focus of the evaluation at that time. And what we heard from grantees Next slide. Um, were a variety of strengths of the uh, grant programs at that time. So the types of support and information they were receiving from the Air District, as well as the flexibility um, of the grant program requirements and um, during the pandemic, as well as the way that deliverables were reported on. Um, but there were also some challenges that grantees identified. And so that had to do with the application and contracting, the single year grants in the past, the grants were only offered on single year terms, um, and the metrics that grantees were reporting on were these really long term that really felt out of um, scope for the type of work that was being funded. So grantees also shared with us some changes that they wanted to see in the grant programs, especially around outreach and promoting accessibility of the application process. Um, as well as multi-year funding. And grantees started to share, especially in those focus groups that we had back in 2021, some ideas for the future, things that they were interested in around the types of technical data or trainings that the Air District might have that would benefit um, grantee organizations. There's ideas around um, really connecting across AB 617 models and funding, sharing resources, collaborations, formalizing a community of practice by um, uh, participants of the, the grant program that you all could form a community of practice and work together. So these were all what came out of the evaluation last year, which informed um, the realignment to the current uh, grant program, the current iteration of the James Carey Smith grant. So the changes that the Air District made are detailed on this slide. Um, they translated the grant program guidelines and outreach materials into um, several additional languages that supported organizations whose staff pr predominantly speak these languages to be able to actually apply for the grant. Um, the Air District simplified and standardized the application form and had webinars to again continue to promote um, the grant availability to more organizations. And they offered um, increased funding, multi-year grants, and then the role of Inter-Ethnica to, to continue to support grantee organizations. So these changes are part of what we will continue to evaluate uh, this year to see what types of um, impact these changes are having on the grant program. So the evaluation questions that RDA will be exploring um, 
are include these three questions. So to what extent does do these funds, does this grant program reach communities of color, reach communities that are disproportionately burdened by air pollution that are really addressing environmental justice in their communities? How does the grant program itself foster authentic community participation and planning activities? What is the work that you all are doing um, with, it, with these funds? And the final question is to evaluate the changes. So what changed since the last grant program and how have those changes positively or negatively affected um, your, you, you as applicants um, as well as your, your constituents? So again, these are the evaluation questions that we'll be exploring. We'll do that through questionnaires and focus groups and by reviewing your quarter or your um, semi-annual reports. So just as a heads up, in May, as Eleanor said, your organization will be receiving um, this questionnaire and that will be uh, just for you as staff to talk about the application process and the contracting process so far and ways that you're experiencing these changes. It'll be a similar questionnaire in the future based on um, uh, the type of work you've done at that point. Focus groups, you'll continue to hear from us uh, closer to August and about those, um, those efforts. And so you'll join in small group settings with other grantee organizations to share your feedback. And finally, the data review um, won't actually require any extra effort on your end because the Air, Di Air District will be sharing your materials with us. And so we'll review that in a more passive manner. Um, so this is the way that we're going to be evaluating the effect and the impacts of the realignment of the James Carey Smith grant program. Um, again, just uh, to underscore that the input you provide through these forums, whether the questionnaire or the focus group, is um, is really, really valuable. This is what directly contributed to the changes that the Air District made last year in large part. And so we do, as Eleanor said earlier, value your honest and candid feedback um, it is how we can improve these types of programs. So um, keep a lookout for those questionnaires and for those focus group opportunities because they do really um, make an impact on, on the way that these grant programs are designed. So now we're going to use a series of polls to continue to collect information that will help us to shape um, some of the types of data that we might collect. So we want you to know um, you're going to get, uh, if you switch to the next slide, um, a prompt that asks you to rate. You'll, you'll get a, a type of data, for instance, and it'll say, you know, one, this is super easy. We already have this data. Two, you know, we could pretty reasonably collect this data if we don't have it already. And three, uh, you know, it's not really realistic for us to collect that type of data. Um, we might need additional capacity or resources, right? Um, this rating will help us to understand what data we ask for and, and what burden it would have on you. Um, so please answer this honestly. If you say it's really easy, that doesn't mean we'll necessarily collect it. So we don't want you to worry about that. Um, and if you say it's hard, it, if, if other organizations said it was easy, but you said it was hard, um, we'll be keeping that in mind, right? And so this can help us inform the types of uh, supports and resources we provide to your organization. So um, please be honest, uh, it will help us to inform this work. Um, so the first question is up here. Uh, how easy or hard would it be for your organization to provide the demographics of your staff? So the race and ethnicity of your staff, the languages spoken, the number of staff, help us learn more about who works at your organization. Easy, medium, or hard? Just about got all participants. Again, um, this helps us to uh, figure out what types of questions we will be asking throughout this evaluation. And Mona, are we looking for um, all 51 participants or how many? It's not because there's the moderators. I think uh, a little over 35 is good because we have multiple reps from different orgs. So once we hit that 35 mark, we can move on to the next question. And we're there here. So I'll just follow your cue on the countdown to the next question. Thank you all. We can go to the next one whenever you think we've hit the right number. Okay. So you can see that um, about a most of folks said it would be fairly easy and a few folks saying that you could provide that data um, even if you don't have it on hand. All right, the next question. Um, 
is how easy or hard would it be for you to provide your organization's total budget? Um, it's helpful for us to know uh, what kind of percentage of your total budget do these grant program or does this grant um, account for? Right. If you haven't answered yet, if you're able to respond, that would be helpful. We're seeing that about two thirds of folks, or actually three quarters of folks, said it's art, it's easy. And a few folks are saying um, that they could provide that in the future. All right. How easy or hard would it be to provide the number of people that are engaged by this project, so the funded project, or that participate in events? So again. Um, how easy would it be to collect the number of people that are engaged by the James Carey Smith grant funded project? And you can actually select multiple options here, easier, medium, or hard. But if you would also like support with creating a method to collect that data, um, let us know because I believe that is a type of support that we can work with grantees on, um, or Interethnica, I think might be leading that. And so please let us know um, if you want that type of support as well. So looking for a few more responses. All right, I think we're about good. Um, thank you for sharing, especially to folks who mentioned that that, that would be challenging. Um, we'll continue to work with you all uh, as appropriate. All right, the next question. How about providing the race or ethnicities of people engaged by the project? Um, you know, do you already think you'll have the sign-in sheets or demographics of participants engaged by your project? This may not be realistic or feasible, so please let us know. We're thinking about um, who these funds reach. Okay. And we're seeing a variety of easy, medium to hard responses um, and, and some interest here in thinking about how you might collect this data. Great, all right, thank you all. Again, this is really important information because it influences um, the type of data we, we ask to collect. And I believe we have two more questions. Second to last question, how easy or hard would it be for your organization to provide the languages spoken by people engaged in the James Carey Smith funded project? Again, we're interested in knowing the languages spoken by the people that you engage in your projects. Thank you all. Again, we're seeing about split, easy, medium, a few folks saying it's a challenge, a few folks expressing interest in that support. All right, I believe this is our final question. We're interested um, in knowing uh, kind of where people live that engage in your project, especially since you might serve different localities and air quality uh, is often measured at a much more granular level. So the zip code or cities where people engaged by your project to live. So think about who, who these funds reach. Zip codes or cities for the people that are engaged in your project. a few more responses here. Um, generally, it looks like folks say it's it's pretty easy or they could start collecting this data. It's good to know. Um, again, thank you all for providing your responses to these questions. I think that's the last question, is that right? Yep, that wraps it. Thanks, Sarah.
Okay, folks. So now we're going to kind of go back to talking about identifying the technical assistance needs, um, partially because I think we needed the overview of evaluation criteria to talk through the needs you may need. So Deborah is going to give us a quick overview of a Jamboard activity, and then we'll all be able to jump into that Jamboard and uh, participate in that. So Deborah, would you like to provide that overview? Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Mona. Um, so I think Mona will put in the chat um, the link to the Jamboard for our next activity. Um, give me a moment to share my screen. So um, here. Um, so if you click on the link, yeah, there it is. Um, so if you click on the link to the chat, you can join us on this Jamboard. Um, and you should see the same screen as um, the one that I'm sharing in front of you. Um, so what you see right now, um, this is just a practice board to get yourself familiarized um, with this tool. Um, so on the left hand side, um, you can click the image of a sticky note, and then you can write the name of your organization. So I'll go ahead and do that and press save. Um, and then I press cancel and then I can move that. Um, I can move that sticky around. So if everyone wants to go ahead um, and try out the tool um, and then perhaps move your um, move your sticky note so they're not all on top of each other. And great, yes, I see a lot of people's names popping up. Mona, can you pro provide instructions for those that have called in or may not have the capacity to do this? Yes, of course. So any of the activities we're doing on the Jamboard, folks, feel free to sound off in the chat your thoughts or ideas or come off mute and, and provide them. We'll walk through some different topics where we'll be asking folks to share their ideas. Um, and when we get there, if you are on the phone, feel free to unmute yourself. You can use the chat and, of course, the Jamboard, and I'll kind of give some notes to remind folks about that. Okay. And I love seeing all of this popping on here. It looks like we're all using the tool pretty swiftly, a lot of us. I love that it's kind of getting organized and aligned already. I see we might have some visual designers on here. Um, and so with that, we can kind of pass us on to the next slide. Thanks for participating in that practice activity. Yeah, um, so, and um, this we'll hand off to Sarah. Great, thank you all. So again, um, as you're thinking about um, what kinds of supports you might have for the valuation, um, we want to start really big picture zooming out. So we'll ask for everyone to kind of close your eyes if you're comfortable and think about your proposed project. Imagine what authentic community participation looks like. We'll take a moment to silently reflect. Um, what does authentic community participation look like? Who's there? What are they doing? Physically, where are they in space? Um, think about what, what you're seeing. So Just if you so go folks, to the middle um, of the screen at the top, you can press the arrows to move on to the next slide. Um, so if you click the arrow, to the right, we'll move on to the second slide. And once again, you can press for the sticky note. Deborah, we have a question in the chat about where to find a sticky note. If you can show that one more time for folks. Yep, right on the um, left-hand side, um, right below the image of the arrow, you can click sticky note, and then you can write on your sticky note, press save, cancel to exit and move your sticky note to the appropriate place to share your feedback. Thank you for that overview. So again, as folks have been imagining authentic participation uh, and what is happening in their, their efforts and their work coming up in the next year, now you can use your sticky notes to share what what support from the air district might look like. So you, you imagined who was involved, what they were doing, where they were. 
Now use your sticky notes to help share uh, what support might look like from the Air District. seeing people are building and receiving cleaner fans, contacts, might be some needs for contacts, peer connections and technical advice, such as a review of science, review of policy, ground truthing concerns, um, support such as being flexible when things change in a program, work, or, or organization. Again, another thought for uh, connections to other organizations, funding, these are excellent. What, what are the supports from the Air District? Timely responses, imagine when you, when you send an email needing responses. Having materials for outreach for your work, rebates, incentives, trainings, really supportive when the Air District knows more about the communities where this work is happening. Translation services. Uh, sample quarterly reports to support um, as you all have to create your own having a sample quarterly report. Um, supports for students who are analyzing data and how do they analyze um, air monitoring data, facilitation of regional collaboration, streamlining, surveying, data collection, and outreach, best practices and examples from similar projects, programs, or organizations elsewhere, reminders before deadlines, right? This is great. Some of these are um, definitely like resources and expanding you know, these, these potential partnerships, right? And some of them are very specific to the grant, which is great as well. Reminders for deadlines, timely responses. Um, thank you all. Um, it's very fine if you're on, on your phone, you can't do sticky notes. If you can use the Zoom chat, you can do that. You can come off mute as well, um, and we can record what you say out loud. We can record that for you. All right, I'm seeing. Um, Um, what types of information does the Air District want to learn about the community needs assessment to help inform the, the needs assessments that you're leading? The Air District has technical data um, that is aligned to grantee work sharing that. So an example of sharing um, information about transportation emissions creating a group so that grantees can be posting communications um, and exploring common interests, right? And so supporting some of those connections, so a Google group or some other way for grantees to connect with each other. Um, information about policies, such as uh, the, the decade changes in ozone. The Air District were to provide incentives or, or other types of supports that um, elevate the work that organizations are doing. Right, some great ideas. Um, if you think of more, feel free to come back to this slide as Deborah showed us a moment ago. You can go up to the top where there's the arrows. You can come back and drop in more. Um, this will stay open. So we will continue to pull down your ideas after the, um, the kickoff today. Um, but I think that uh, my time is probably done, so I will kick it off to whoever is taking us away to slide three. Thank you, Sarah. And I'm really glad to see everyone's participation on the board. That was such a great brainstorm, lots of great ideas. And so now thinking about all everything we've talked about today, especially all of the admin requirements you have and your grants. Thinking about also grants you may have worked on in the past and requirements like invoicing, reporting, and other things, what areas of support would you have appreciated and what areas do you think you may need help on this grant or support? Um, and to 
think about some of those high level things and start to actionize them into technical support that Interethica may be able to help you with in the Air District as well. Um, so we'll go through some topics and we'd love for you to jam on the board. I'll facilitate those topics, but feel free to click ahead. Um, and where Deborah's cursor is right now, you can see where you can click ahead. And so let's go to our first few topics. So quarterly reporting and invoicing, right? So go ahead and add a sticky note there. You know, if you just need general support, you can just drop your organization's name. If there are support ideas that you have for quarterly reporting or questions you might that might come up or things you might need that uh, in terms of capacity, go ahead and drop a sticky there. You can also grab the little heart icon or the thumbs up that's at the top and drag that onto someone else's sticky note and uh, kind of give that a, a lift there as well. So feel free to sound off in the chat, uh, use the board or come off mute. So SF Transit Rider sample report, please. Okay, is there a sample invoice template? That's a great question. I believe uh, there is one and Eleanor will be excited to release that as soon as it's ready to you, for you. Um, what else about quarterly reporting or invoicing? We heard some stuff earlier about monthly invoicing possibly, um, whether or not that's possible, maybe we could set you up to uh, create monthly invoices and then uh, meld those all together for when it's due. Uh, what else are we seeing here? Reminders about upcoming reports. That comes from the Earth team. Thank you for that. Yeah, I see Eleanor, your message in the chat. Yes, we do have an invoice template that organizations are welcome to use and uh, the Air District will send that out to everyone. Thank you, Eleanor, so much for that. Love seeing all the emojis around. Calendar invites on due dates. Okay. Expectations around timeline from invoice submittal to payment. Great. I love the, these topics there. They lead us right into the next thing. I'll give everyone a couple, a couple more minutes here to just jot down their ideas. Anything else? Seeing a lot of support around the template, really support along all of these things. So that's great. And there's different ways we'll be able to get this support to everyone. We're thinking about possibly doing more workshops around some of these things. We can definitely do office hours or one-on-one -on -one support, depending on the level of support your organization may need. Um, there's always also the opportunity to learn from each other in this way as well. So let's go on to our next topic. And of course, you can jump back there if you come up with more ideas. Um, so this one's about project timelines and project budget planning. So some of you may have proposed for a one-year project. Some of you are hoping to do two or three years uh, with your project. So what ideas or what support do you need for setting a project timeline, ensuring those benchmark check-ins, uh, fitting in the reports and the budgets? How are we tracking those, that kind of data? When should we check back? Um, there. And then for project budget planning, how do we make our, our funds spread out over the whole project? Is there a front loading kind of budget workshop we need for setting up those things and then making sure you have the budget for implementation? So go ahead, throw those sticky notes on the board, drop them in the chat, throw up some likes. When will we know if funding for years two and three will be approved? That's a great question. We will make sure to touch on that in the Q&A section there. Anything else around budget and timelines? Seeing support, support for that question. So we'll make sure that we get to that one in the Q&A. Okay, seems like we've got sample timelines from similar projects, okay. Future funding opportunities at midpoint. Great. And I think that that will also go along with finding other grant opportunities, maybe uplifting your project goal across multiple funding streams. What is it a what is a reasonable set of deliverables given the budget? I think that's great for project budget planning. What if something goes one to two months long? Can the contract be extended? Thank you for that. I think that is a good good area to find support and a communications pathway towards on the project timeline. Also touches on a previous comment about being flexible as things change. Okay, so I'll just give another minute here on this question, on this uh, these two topics. I'm looking at the chat, nothing there. 
All right, Deborah, if you can move us along to the next one. And again, like we said, feel free to bounce back if you think of other things. Um, and these ones are, are less about your grant requirements, right? But about uh, helping you as an organization become stronger, have more reach, uplift your mission, and hopefully get ready to be an AB 617 designated community. So finding new grant opportunities, how can we help you there, right? Um, jot down your ideas, other support, support you might need around that. And would you be interested in grant writing workshops? Um, if, if that's something of interest for your organization, feel free to drop a sticky note there. And then we have these two spaces. I see emphatic yes. Yes, yes, love that. Okay, so it definitely looks like there is some poor. What would this look like? Great. Yeah, so finding new grant opportunities, we can imagine different things. And this might be something we have a workshop about or talk about in office hours because every organization is slightly different. Um, but it could involve getting on the right listservs. You know, how are you getting engaged, making sure that information is getting to you when grants come out? Um, you know, also grant writing workshops can be about those mission statements, right? And having yourself stand out as an organization. Um, really finding your niche. I think also thinking of outside of the box. I know when we were engaging folks for, for this grant, some people said, well, I'm not sure that the Air District would fund me. Um, but when we really dug into what was being offered to this grant capacity building to uplift cleaner air was something that was for some organizations, not on the surface, but part of their projects. And so I know some of you all are here for that. Yes, help describing our work funded by James Carey Smith Band to build into a bigger program serving more communities in the future. That comes from Transform, I love that. So leveraging the work you're doing here to help win future grants and, and go further there. Finding matching funds, okay. Can the Air District pass the grant opportunities to us? Collaborate on opportunities, hearing about some partnership here. We'll talk a little bit about that. Okay, so lots of support. So I think we'll definitely need to set something up to make sure we get through there. Um, and then I'll just give it another minute here. Profiling some of our projects on a media page. How about corporate sponsorships? Lots of ideas uh, I think that we can support. And it sounds like orgs can certainly learn from each other on, on these as well. Writing extensive grants, especially for government grants, right? So we know that's a challenge. I think we'd love to support everyone on that. Um, running organizations and capacity challenges and staffing challenges. So we're here for you for that. Okay, anything else in this last one? Provide abstracts for completed projects. That's great, you know, and, and something about grant writing and finding opportunities is, you know, really what we call put it in the can. So once you do it a few times, create those templates so that on the next one, it becomes easier. Less restrictive deliverables, more flexibility, okay. All right, Deborah, do you wanna take us on to the next slide? And this is really for anything else, right? What other types of support would be helpful for you? What actions could we provide or the Air District provide to help your program be more successful? I could just drop those things in here. Anything else? And I know we've covered a lot and there's a lot of great questions. So if there's nothing else, that's fine too. here. More information out about AB 617 and 1000. Perfect. Yeah. Anything there? Capacity building for grants. What else? Series of trainings. Okay. Specifically on how to interact with community youth impacted communities. So it's maybe some specific trainings about engaging with folks and how to do that in a way that's empathetic and also uplifts uh, the mission and goals of the project. Great. Anything else? Give it a couple more minutes here. Thank you all for being so active and, and dropping your thoughts on the board. Support on policies, update finance and HR systems, recruitment of staff and community members. Okay. Great. Well, like Sarah said, this board will be live, so feel free to come back to it and add your thoughts. We'll be organizing everything we learned here 
sorry, Deborah, the screen, the screen jumped to the side. There we go. Um, we'll be organizing everything we learned here, your answers to the polls and uh, kind of start to design what types of support may be needed and offer it to the group. And we'll be in touch about all of these things. So I'll, I'll leave this up for one more minute and then we'll go ahead and uh, switch back to the PowerPoint. Yes, Jamboard is a cool too. Thank you for that. Um, we, we love to allow you all to write your own things rather than having to describe them for you because sometimes it triggers great thoughts. So glad that we're enjoying the Jamboard. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close this out and then I will, sorry, pass it over to Lisa to talk a little bit about partnership possibilities. Sorry, Lisa, you're on mute. Um, am I still on mute? Because it's asking me to unmute myself. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Well, I don't know about your breakout rooms, but we had a lot of talk in our breakout rooms. Very naturally, the, these groups are very nimble at becoming partners. Um, so I just think that we want to just think about how the advantages the real advantages of collaborating um, with your um, with other organizations, they can re they, you can have some really good results like um, qualifying and winning larger grants, saving on administrative costs. You know, if two orgs focus on the same overarching goal as as we do a lot here, we all have the same goal, um, and split up work based on their strengths. They can, they can save money and still, you know, have some great outreach. Um, we all share the same mission in, in these groups um, and we can expand that bandwidth by launching joint projects and that serve the same geographic area. Um, and by doing so, we might also alleviate some of the meeting fatigues that our community members and clients are beginning to feel. For instance, some orgs may serve older adults and another org youth and still another Latino or Spanish speaking community members. So by partnering, you could collaborate on materials and save costs, expand your reach. Um, and for those small one to two person orgs, um, maybe you'd like to just partner up for something like brainstorming activities or get help from an organization with a lot of experience. And for those very experienced orgs, maybe you'd like to mentor or help a newer org. We like to think of the partnering as a way to reach and expand, expand the mission of the work we're doing, your brand exposure. And um, these, these partnerships can become very strong and will strengthen the environmental issues we're all here today to support. Um, yeah, and partnerships are a big deal and everybody seems interested and they were all already reaching out to each other. So I think that we are coming into Q&A and I'm gonna go ahead now and pass this over to Eleanor and Mona. Thank you so much everybody for the really rich uh, discussion via Jamboard and chat and everything else. Um, there's so much potential, I'm just really excited. Um, so with that, we are towards the end of our formal content for you all. Um, want to, again, stop and offer it up for questions and answers. Um, please stay on the line a little bit longer because we do have um, some exit polls after this. Just want to get a, everyone's pulse. And we're seeing, um, great, some chats and some questions that have come up. So thanks for... Um, huge thanks to our partners for serving this all up. Um, so Mona, do you want to talk about this a little bit and then we can be on standby to answer questions? Of course. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and annotate your questions onto the mirror board here. No need to jump into a link and do that. So all the way to the right, we have questions that, oh, sorry, I turned my video on, that were kind of asked and answered earlier, just so that we're, you know, documenting those questions. And on the left were a few that came up in the Jamboard that we'll go ahead and start with, and then we'll go into live questions. So if you have one, raise your hand or sound off in the chat. So the first one here is, when will we know if funding for years two and three will be approved? 
Great question. That is the $100,000 question, right? So we as a grants team are working really closely with air district leadership and with the budgeting process. Um, we anticipate having some additional information this summer um, as we look at budget cycles and also grantee progress towards um, deliverables. And so we will be in close contact I do just want to state again that we are in this very interesting position with regards to geography, right? And so just to be transparent, um, for organizations that are working on projects exclusively in East Oakland, um, because East Oakland has been designated now as an Assembly Bill 617 community, there will not be additional James Carey Smith grant funding for years two and three for East Oakland projects. That's because, again, just to restate, we anticipate that there will be supports coming through the AB 617 program, right? Um, so it's not that there will be no support, but it would no longer be possible through this James Carey Smith Community Grant um, you know, arm. Um, and then in terms of other folks, the non-East Oakland um, geographies, again, we hope to have some more information this summer um, as we look at years two and three. And just want to state, we know all of you are looking at funding and staffing and really trying to be, um, you know, diligent about queuing that all up for your organizations to be successful and for this work to be successful. So we do not take that lightly and we will be in contact as soon as we have something substantive to share with you all. Um, all right, thank you, Eleanor. I'll move that sure. to the answer column. Next question we had was, what, is so what if something goes long? Sorry, that was a typo. What if something goes long? Is there a way for the contract to be extended? That's a good question. I think there are sort of two pieces to this for me, right? There's um, if something needs to be adjusted during the program year, um, again, let us know when we can look at perhaps there's some flexibility with, um, you know, a, a deadline or something like that. In terms of extending the overall contract, it depends. It depends on a number of factors. Um, uh, not to bore everybody with the, the details of the back end, but we have purchase orders. We work, of course, with so many departments to get these grants out. Um, so the finance department and accounts payable and so forth. So we need to be really mindful of all the paperwork that allows us to get the funds out the door. So we would just want to be really cognizant of um, what limitations there may be um, on our end. You know, we can't promise anything, but um, we know situations come up. So we could certainly look to to see what might be possible. All right, thanks, Eleanor. And we have a question from the chat. So let me just make that super large so we can all see it together. Will it be possible to adjust our year two and three budgets? As we start doing the work, we may learn where we need more or less resources. Yes, um, first and foremost, I will say, um, everybody, we ask for your patience and understanding because as Sarah noted previously, um, the James Carey Smith um, grant program was one year, right, for grantees previously. So um, we are really excited about this possibility and we will be learning along with you all about how to do this um, possible year two, year three funding and, and program planning with you all. Um, and so we imagine that yes, we would need to come back together um, and look at year two and year three budgets. We know those were done back in the fall of 2021. And then just as you lift up, um, right? So as, as folks are on the ground doing the work, um, we have a much better sense of what is needed and what the budget realities are. So that is our, our um, what we anticipate. Thanks for lifting that up. Okay, next question. Should we contact Interethnica directly to begin discussions on all of the awesome forms of support they've listed? So I could start answering this one for you all and then Eleanor and, and the rest of the team feel free to fill in. So yes, I think uh, we'd love it if you'd contact us directly. Our goal is to not silo support so that, you know, we're making sure that everybody knows what's available and that uh, if we need to broaden our, our reach on this to host a workshop or office hours. But if you're looking for one-to-one -one, one -one support or uniquely to your project or program, yes, please reach out. There will be an, uh, a follow-up email, a one-pager on kind of everything that was went over today, and we will include our contact information there. Um, but anyone else on the team, feel free to jump in and speak to anything I may have missed on this one.
Okay, yeah, we're excited to support you all and, and look forward to connecting. We'll also be reaching out to each of you based on uh, the information we learned today. Another question, can you give a brief overview of the quarterly report for, versus invoices, especially as it relates to level of detail? Absolutely. And we actually, um, I'll put a link in the chat. We just today have gone live um, with our website. Um, we uh, have some information. If you go to the link I just put in the chat, and if you scroll down to the bottom of that web page, you will actually see our quarterly reporting, our progress report form, and an invoice template. So in terms of the level of detail, that's a great question. Um, quarterly reports, um, I'll, I'll talk about reports first and then I'll talk about invoices. Um, quarterly reports, the grants team feels strongly that we want you all to be using your precious staff resources doing, again, the important work um, with communities. Yes, we need to know about your progress and yes, we can't wait to see those deliverables. Um, we're not looking for a thesis statement, right? So you'll see if you click through to that fillable PDF, um, we're looking for a couple of pages um, where you can talk each quarter about um, your progress towards tasks and deliverables and let us know what's going on. It's a really, really rich, valuable way for us to be in contact and to look at um, what's going as anticipated, what's going in a, a bit of a different direction. Um, <clears throat> so we'll work with everybody about level of detail, um, but again, fairly high level of detail. The final report is a really wonderful opportunity to dive uh, a bit deeper as needed and get into a deeper level of detail. For invoices, you will see again on that um, page that I just posted in the chat, you'll see a template invoice. Um, and we are um, really supportive of a fairly high level invoice. Um, and that's for a number of reasons, um, in part because as we mentioned previously during today's event, um, the Air District is front loading, right? And offering these payments up front. And so we realize that that then makes it a little bit challenging sometimes in terms of um, itemizing the staff time and the various components. Um, so we welcome high level invoices. Um, if we have questions or if we need more details, um, we can certainly come back to you, but we want to be mindful and respectful of you all's time. Um, and so high level um, would be really fantastic. Okay, great. Thank you. Next question we have here. Just curious if the Air District can envision how the grantees work may weave together into a strategic picture. Thanks for lifting that up. I think that we could have a four hour retreat on that, right? I mean, there's so much here. I would love to get you all in a room, even if it were masked and distanced, <laughs> but just, you know, talk about all of this. How can we weave this together? Where, where is the air district going and where can we go? Where should we be going? And how can we bring all communities along with us, right? So um, I won't be able to do justice to that here, but um, thanks for lifting that up. That's absolutely on our minds. And let's keep looking at this during our touch points throughout the grant program. Great, thank you. Yes, thank you for lifting that up. Next question, and this is the last one I have, but if there are more, throw them in the chat or raise your hand, folks. Will there be a way for grantees to communicate more easily? An example, Slack. Great question. And Jill, I'm wondering if, if you're looking at um, communication between grantees, sort of independent of the Air District, if you're looking at the Air District pushing information out to grantees. So if you have more clarification, feel free to come off of mute or, or add that in the chat. But I will just say while, while you're thinking about that, Something that's always on our minds as a grant team, um, we stay up at night wondering, you know, how much information should we push out to you all and how frequently, right? We know that you have um, hundreds of emails in your inboxes and, you know, such a rich discussion about the supports and the ways in which the Air District can push information and resources your ways. Um, your way, excuse me. And so I think that will be maybe a learning for all of us is looking at what is the right level of communication and just want to acknowledge that that may look different for some grantees as opposed to others based on your organization size, based on your styles and things like that. Um, so we will do our best to consolidate communications when possible and certainly be timely. Um, but if you want more information or if you're feeling like 
too many emails, um, just let us know. Again, we're, we're learning along with you all. Okay, so both general sharing um, from the Air District and from the grantees. Oh, interesting, that's a great point. So lifting up um, what's going on. You know, we hadn't considered a Slack channel, but let's, let's consider that. And if any folks have um, thoughts, if any grantees have thoughts, feel free to put those in the chat. Um, as we mentioned earlier, this, this grant program has really grown <laughs> substantially um, just in the last um, few months, <clears throat> excuse me. And so we're eager, eager to learn from you all what has worked, right? When there is a, a cohort um, of this size, Again, we, we wanna be mindful of that, that delicate balance between sharing information and not overwhelming. So if folks have recommendations, best practices you wanna lift up, um, by all means, let us know. Okay, so I don't see any other questions, but I do see another thought in the chat that I'll read out loud. An option could be setting aside a page on the website that shows updates so funders can refer to it when needed and not feel overwhelmed with communication. So again, speaking to that uh, ease of communication between the Air District and the grantees and creating an open space for that. We love, love those thoughts. So I'm not seeing any other questions, Eleanor. Uh, if anyone wants to raise their hand or drop things in the chat, we'll give it just another second or so. And this has been, again, so rich and fantastic. I'm Extremely grateful to all of you for being um, very present and interactive during this session. Um, and again, we have a lot of learning ahead of us, so we'll just be learning together. Um, I'm not seeing any other uh, messages coming in through the chat. So we'll move towards um, our exit polls and closing it out. If folks do think of a question, um, don't hesitate to put it in the chat even while those polls are running. Um, or again, you have our community grants email address so you can reach out at any point. But um, let's now um, just transition to wrapping it up. I know we're, we're coming up on the four o'clock hour. And again, this has been such a, a rich session. So deep, deep gratitude to all the grantees on the line, our awesome partners. A few quick reminders about next steps. So again, that baseline questionnaire for grantee staff, not the communities that you serve, but grantee staff, that will go live next week. Check your email inboxes for that. Our experience has been um, when testing it that it often goes to spam. So maybe pull that out of spam. We'll send a reminder email as well. And we will follow up next week with the recording of this event, the slide deck, um, and then the resources that we mentioned. So um, thanks for giving us a little bit of time to pull everything together and, and get that all queued up for you. And then as a reminder, as you all prepare to submit your first quarterly reports in June or August, um, remember that our team is here to help. And so we'll be looking at um, ways to do that and the best ways for you all to get the supports you need. So the last thing we'll ask is that you all, um, if you can take one minute to respond to a quick exit poll and make sure that'll pop up, make sure to scroll down because we have some good questions in there, but use that scroll bar to scroll down, um, get to all those rich questions. Um, and then after you're done with that, you can feel free to jump off. But thank you so, so much for your time, all the critical work you were doing, you are doing. Um, we've been so excited, the whole team has been so excited for this event and you all just make it come to life. So we can't wait to be in contact with you all. Um, and thanks again for answering these questions. Um, so they can sit, they concern what topics did you learn about? What were they, what were most useful? How prepared do you feel to embark on your grant requirements and projects? Maybe you're feeling a bit of a boost. Maybe you're feeling some questions. How supported do you feel with the types of assistance being offered to you as a grantee? Um, we know that will look a little bit different, um, for organizations and certainly for, you know, staff within one organization as well. Um, and then what could we improve on for future workshops? This, of course, is a multiple choice question in your exit poll, but if something is, you know, top of mind, drop us an email or drop it in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. Again, we're, we're trying out something different here and, and really trying to be responsive with the grant program and would love to hear from you all.
how we could improve. So we really appreciate that. So I see some good participation coming in. Folks are um, good, a variety of topics. Folks are lifting up really a nice spread um, of what people found the most useful. So that's helpful to know, a little bit of everything. Um, luckily, it sounds like many of you are feeling either somewhat prepared or very prepared to, to get started or, or you know, to continue on. Um, and that may change, but, but that's good for now. How supported do you feel? Yay, feel, folks are feeling very supported and somewhat supported. Um, again, just keep reaching out. You know, we're really looking forward to being in touch. It's an ongoing relationship. Um, and then what could we improve on for future workshops? Okay, so problem solving with peers um, and it looks like we can tighten some things up and, and tweak our ratios of discussion and questions and so forth. Okay. So thank you, thank you. So good to see familiar faces and new faces. We can't wait to be in touch. Um, we'll end that now. And again, we'll share those materials and thrilled to work with you all. Thanks everybody.